You are listening to Chesterton Radio at ChestertonRadio.com. Army, with two humiliating defeats handed to Notre Dame in the past two years, the Irish are itching to get back at him. Two years ago, Army beat Notre Dame 59 to nothing in this very stadium. Last year, Army beat Notre Dame 48 to nothing. And the Fighting Irish have come into this game unbeaten and swearing they're going to get vengeance this afternoon. As for Army, they've still got the touchdown twins of Blanchard and Davis. It's an unbeaten cadet team, one of the finest to ever roll westward from West Point. So these two teams getting all ready to kick off to each other in just a second. The Yankee Stadium and the sun is shining down for the moment now. Sun is trying to, sun is trying to peek through the gray clouds as the game will just about get underway in roughly some 30 seconds. Unbeaten Army tackling, unbeaten Notre Dame from the Yankee Stadium in New York City, and the place is literally jumping. It's jam-packed. There are 75,000 people in attendance at the moment. You couldn't get another person in here with a shoehorn. The crowd came early to watch the cadets march in. They're already in there seated. A thousand of the student body from Notre Dame came out from South Bend, and their cheers are reverberating throughout the autumn air. It's going to be Notre Dame kicking off, Army receiving. Army wins the toss and likes to receive, and Army is going to defend the eastern goal. They have the wind a little bit at their back, what little wind there is, but it isn't enough to help or to hinder. So it'll be Notre Dame kicking off, Army receiving, and holding for Notre Dame. Holding will probably be Lou Jack, and kicking for the Irish will be George Conner, a transfer from Holy Cross. And the game is just about to get underway, so settle back for an afternoon as unbeaten Army hits unbeaten Notre Dame. Both swear they're going to win today, and the ultimate winner undoubtedly will be the national champion after this game is over. Referee, Raleigh Barnum. He speaks to both captains and says, are you ready? Just as though somebody told all 75,000 people to get up, get off their, well, just get up off the chairs. They all stand up and wait for this kickoff. The rocket off the ground into the air. Army and Notre Dame, the Yankee Stadium, the temperature down in the 50s. It's a cold day, and that's a break, incidentally, for Army. It means the plate can keep his first team in most of the afternoon. He wanted to do it. Deepest for the Army are Blanchard and Davis. They're standing all the way back on the Army goal line. Holding for Notre Dame will be Johnny Lujak. Game is a little bit delayed, getting underway. The crowd is surged down into the playing field. The police are beating the back. They got the back now. The kickoff will be coming in just a moment. The sidelines are jam-packed with humanity. George Conner comes forward. The game is under the way, and the kick is up in the air. It's rolling down all the way to the Notre Dame 20-yard line. It's taken another 20 by Arnold Tucker. He's up to the 25, up to the 30, up to the 35. Save it as he goes to the 40. He goes all the way up to the Army 45-yard line before he's finally brought down. Arnold Tucker, quarterback of the Army, carries the ball from the Army 20 up to the Army 45. He hurdles right through the center of the Notre Dame line. Notre Dame onto the defense, Army onto the offense. First and 10 for the cadets. Terry Brennan back in semi-safety position. He's starting about half back for Notre Dame. Backfield is Lou Jack, Sitko, Mello, and Brennan. That's the starting Notre Dame backfield. Army in their key formation. In motion this time is Glenn Davis. Ball is given to Blanchard. Blanchard into the center line. He fumbles the ball. The ball's rolling around and it's recovered by Army. Barney Poole. Left end of Army recovers on the Notre Dame 49 yard line. Glenn Davis would fumble that ball. He had handled it to Blanchard. Blanchard let it slip out of his hands for a minute. He tried to heave a lateral to Davis. Davis couldn't get his mitts anywhere near the ball. The ball squirted away from him. And Barney Poole, the left end of Army, recovered. So it's still looking at that ball in the first fumble of the afternoon. Ball has been advanced on that play. Approximately six yards. Call it a fumble play, if you will, but it counts. Ten seconds of playing time have gone by in the first period of the game from the Yankee Stadium, and Army is down in the Notre Dame territory thanks to a recovered fumble made by Army and recovered by the cadets. In motion this time is Rip Rowan going out to the left. Ball is given this time to Glenn Davis. Davis into the center of the line, and he gains very little. Hands it to Blanchard. There is very little gain on that play. Johnny Mastrangelo, the right guard of Notre Dame, comes in to make that stop. Actually, there was no gain on the play, but there's going to be a penalty. Red flag was dropped, the red handkerchief, and it looks like it's a penalty against Army. Looks like it is a penalty against Army for holding, which if true will be a 15-yard penalty. Referee is in now talking to the captain of the Army team. That's Johnny Lujak asking him what he wants to do. Ball is resting on the Notre Dame 49-yard line. Here comes the penalty against Army. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 yards holding on Army. Army is set all the way back to their own 36-yard line. So Army had the ball a moment ago, second and four on the Notre Dame 49-yard line. Thanks to that holding penalty, they now have the ball second down and 18 yards to go. Make it 19 to go. The four they needed and the 15 they just got penalized. Rowan deployed way out to the left. In motion this time is Blanchard. The ball is given to Davis. Davis comes over the short side of his line. He reaches the Army 40-yard line, goes to the 41. He's knocked down on the 41 by Johnny Lujak, Terry Brennan, and Jim Mello. All bring him down. 
That'll bring up the third down and still leave 13 yards to be gained. Army's ball. They picked up enough yardage for a first down, but they were penalized for 15 yards when they were detected holding. And so this game was now almost two minutes ago, having gone by in the first period. Finds the score. Army nothing. Notre Dame nothing. And Notre Dame is playing a five-man line with three men backing up that line. Davis and Blanchard doing the ball carrying to date. It is third and 13. The cadets ball deployed way out to the right as Rip Rowan on a wide open formation. Tucker behind the center and a key. In motion this time is Doc Blanchard. Ball goes back to Glenn Davis. He throws a ladder on to Blanchard. Blanchard gets hit as he catches it. He's thrown for a loss. He's up back on the Army 39-yard line by George Strohmeyer, roving center of Notre Dame. A completed lateral tossed by Davis, caught by Blanchard. No gain on the play, a loss of two yards. It'll be fourth down coming up now, 16 yards to go. Army's ball and back in safety position for Army. On the right is Angel Sitko. On the left is Perry Brennan. Two safety men and they're standing back on the Irish 25-yard line. In foot formation for Army is Glenn Davis. All-American Davis is standing back on his own 27. He'll boot from the 30. Army's in punt formation. It's fourth and 16. Here's the kick. It's up in the air. It's coming over towards Perry Brennan. Brennan is signaling he's going to take it. He lets the ball bound all the way down to the Notre Dame 20-yard line. And it's stopping on the 20. Terry doesn't even try to handle it. Terry Brennan very wisely realizing that he has to take a dangerously bouncing ball and try and run it up the field if he can get his mix on it. Alex to let the ball roll. Actually, it didn't roll more than two or three feet after it hit the ground. Notre Dame ball, first and ten on the Irish 20-yard line. Notre Dame out of the huddle. Army playing a six-man line. Two men backing up that line. Notre Dame in the key formation. Jim Mello in the fullback spot this time. He's deployed out wide to the right. Ball goes to Terry Brennan over to Amos. Sit goes, sit goes, goes from the 21 to the 22, and then it's not back to the 20 yard line. I don't think there was any gain on that play. Amos sit goes, moves it forward to the 20 yard line. He fumbles in the pit. Army recovered on the Notre Dame 23 yard line. Sit goes, fumbled, and Army recovered on the Notre Dame 23. It's Army's ball down on the Notre Dame 23 yard line. As sit goes, he plowed into that line, let the ball get away from him. And Jim Enos, center of Army, recovered for the cadets. Here's a running play. The ball is passed out to Doc Blanchard. He's going right with a of his line. He's up for a loss. He started from the 27. He just about got back to the 26. But remember, the line is coming through the 24. So on that play, there was a loss of two yards. I hope you can follow this rapid fire. It has to be rapid. So much is happening. Notre Dame's Angle Sitko in the first running play for the Fighting Irish fumbled. As he came through the center of the line, he had passed the 22. He fell forward to the 24. The ball squirted away from him. Jeannie, in the center of Army, fell on it. It was Army's ball. On the first running play, Doc Blanchard tried to skirt around his own left end, and they lost two yards. So it is now second down coming up, 12 yards to go. Army's ball down on the Notre Dame 27-yard line. Army out of the huddle very quickly now. This is a golden opportunity for the cadets. In motion this time is Davis. Tucker throwing a quick pass off to Davis. He's down to the 20. Stays on his feet. He's back down on the 19-yard line. Glenn Davis, fullback of Army, running it down to the 19-yard line as he takes a quick pass from Arnold Tucker. There's the first forward pass of the afternoon, and it's complete. It moves the cadet team down to the Notre Dame 19-yard line. Terry Brennan, the left halfback, had to come up from almost the goal line to make that save, and he did it with a one-handed tackle, which spun Davis around and dropped him to the ground. It is third down, coming up five yards to go. Army's ball down on the Notre Dame 19-yard line. We've just started the game from the Yankee Stadium. There's no score as yet, but the cadets are deep down in Notre Dame territory. In motion is Rip Rowan this time. Ball is given this time to Doc Blanchard. Blanchard pulls his way down to the 16-yard line, and he stops on the 16-yard line. Doc Blanchard pulling his way between left tackle and left guard before Georgie Connor, the left tackle of Notre Dame, can stop him. Ball is resting on the Notre Dame 16-yard line. It is fourth down coming up two yards to go. This can be one of the crucial plays of this game. If Army picks up this two yards, they've got a first down way deep in the territory. If Notre Dame can hold them, they'll take over. Army's ball, fourth and two, down on the Notre Dame 16-yard line. Key formation. Tucker calling these signals. Nobody in motion this time. Ball is given to Blanchard. Blanchard past the 15. He's down to the 14 yard line. And he is filled back all the way back to the 16 yard line. Let's see where the referee says that ball was stopped. If he says it was stopped on the 14, it's a first down. If he says it's on the 15, it's not a first down. They're going to bring the line sticks into measure. Hang on to your seats. This makes a great deal of difference whether Army got that first down or not. If they didn't, they missed it by inches. Ball is resting just shy of the 14 yard line. I believe Notre Dame stopped them. They did! Notre Dame stopped them on the 14-yard line. Notre Dame takes over first and 10 on their own 14-yard line. Army goes back into the defense. Notre Dame under the offensive. A fighting band of Irishmen have come out of South Bend, Indiana, determined to stop a team that hasn't been stopped since 1943. Single wing over the right for Notre Dame this time. Ball is given to Terry Brennan over to Sitko. Sitko going around the left side of his line. Gives it back to Brennan. He gets up to the 20, stays on his feet, goes to the 25, and he's knocked out on the 25-yard line. Referee may stay stepped out on the 23. Rip Rowan at fullback made the tackle for Army. 
Army's defense is different than their offense. In that, I mean the alignment of players is completely different. Blanchard playing a wing back on offense, plays generally defensive fullback. Notre Dame has the ball now. It is second down, one yard to go. Again, a nine yards on that play. They ran it from the 16 to the 25 yard line. Here's a quick flip pass. The ball is given to Jimmy Mello, the fullback. He goes into the center of the line and he just about picks up that first down. And I think it is a first down for Notre Dame. Hang on to your seats while we see whether it is or it isn't. They're going to measure this one, too. Bringing line six in, and it is. It's a first down for Notre Dame. Terry Brennan, left half back of Notre Dame. Gets credit for a beautiful block on that play. Here's a defensive arrangement for Army. Rip Lowen in at fullback. Glenn Davis at one wing back. Blanchard at the other. Notre Dame ball first and ten on their own 26-yard line. Key formation. In motion is Terry Brennan for the Irish. Ball is given this time to Mello. Mello to Sitko. Sitko comes across the 30 to the 35. He splits the army line wide open as he runs all the way up the field to the 36-yard line. Amos Sitko, right half back of Notre Dame, who put the Irish in that terrible hole a moment ago when he fumbled, comes up to the 36-yard line. And this army team, which if you're an army supporter, don't you give up this because Notre Dame's running through them now. This is one of the great teams of all time, that army team. Hasn't been beaten since 43. Terry Brennan out wide this time for Notre Dame. Single wing back formation. The ball is given Amos Sitko again. He tries the same play over the right side of the line and gains at most two yards. He reaches the Notre Dame 39-yard line before he is finally throttled by Joe Steffi and Jim Venus. Another first down for Notre Dame and a tremendous cheer splits the heavens as the Irish supporters realize that their team has reeled off two first downs while Army has not been able to make any. There are seven and a half minutes of playing time remaining in the first period from the Yankee Stadium. The score is nothing to nothing. Notre Dame has the ball. And they are working another danger. In motion this time is Jim Mello. Notre Dame running out of the team formation. Ball is given to Terry Brennan. Brennan over the right side of the line, and he gains nothing. Gets back to the line of scrimmage, and Sheldon Biles, left tackle of Army, smacks him down. No gain on that play. It'll be second down coming up nine yards, nine and a half yards to go. A gain of a half a yard. Army, with a very strong, powerful line, have gone out of a five-man defensive formation into a six-man defensive formation with two men backing it up to stop Notre Dame after the Irish had reeled off two consecutive first downs. Notre Dame's ball running out of the key formation. The ball is given this time on the cross to Jim Mello. Mello on a reverse gives it to Sitko. Sitko goes to the 45. He's knocked down just shy of the 45 by Sheldon Biles and by Jim Enos. A gain of five yards on that play. It'll be third down coming up, four and a half yards to go. We're halfway through the first period of the football game from the Yankee Stadium. The National Broadcasting Company is sending across this nation. And the score is Army nothing, Notre Dame nothing. Here comes Notre Dame out of the huddle very quickly. Jim Martin deployed way out to the left this time. He's Notre Dame's left end. He's 15 yards out to the left of his tackle. A quick flip pass is thrown out to Jimmy Martin. Martin drops it. Pass thrown out to Martin. Whistle on the play. It wouldn't have counted had it been completed. But nevertheless, it wasn't even completed. So the ball is returned to the line of scrimmage. It brings up the fourth down, leaves five yards to go. It is Notre Dame's ball on their own 45-yard line. And the Irish here took over on their own 16, returned it to the 45. So they're in much better shape than they were when they recovered this ball. Glenn Davis, left half back of Arnie, goes back into safety position, as does Arnold Tucker. Nothing to nothing. Score halfway through the first period. Tucker deployed out to the left, Davis to the right. In the backfield of the Army, and kicking for Army will be Johnny Lujak on that weak angle. Let's see what happens. He boots it, gets a nice kick up in the air. Waiting to take it is Mr. Glenn Davis. He takes it. Junior has it on the 20s, up to the 25, gets away from two men, stays on his feet, and he is finally knocked down as he comes all the way up to the Army 35-yard line. Glenn Junior Davis is hit by Johnny Lujak, quarterback of Notre Dame, who made that tackle. Well, if Mr. Lujak has got a bad ankle, it has to show today. He got a beautiful kick away and then came up the field to make the tackle, and he tackled a guy who's pretty hard to bring down, Glenn Davis. Here comes Army out of the huddle. It's their ball, first and ten on their own 34-yard line. Army is running out of a modified single wing back formation. In motion is Blanchard this time. The ball is given to Davis. Davis strikes it to the clear the court. He stays on his feet and is finally hit by a safety man on the 44 as he comes up the field for almost a first down. Glenn Davis runs off seven and a half big yards. Jim Mello, fullback of Notre Dame, playing safety for the Irish. Last man who could get him finally got him. Davis broke through the line, broke into the secondary, appeared as though he was going for a touchdown for the moment, as he looked like he might be headed for pay dirt into the clear. Jimmy Mello, defensive fullback for Notre Dame, actually playing safety man, was the last man who could get his hands on him, and he did. He stopped him after an eight-yard gain, and it's now Army's ball. Second down, two yards to go, and the ball is resting on the Army 43-yard line, and time has been called. First period of the football game from the Yankee Stadium. Army nothing, Notre Dame nothing. A very even game today. Here's a Notre Dame cheer from across the field with time off. Let's listen. In case you came in late or didn't hear the starting lineup, I'll go over the backfields in a moment because these are very important. 
For Army, the sensational touchdown twins, unanimously All-American on everybody's team. Glenn Davis and Doc Blanchard are both in the game. One's at the left wing back, the other at the right. Rip Rowan is in for Ugg Fusion at fullback. Fusion was hurt this week. Rowan is starting. Actually, Rowan is slightly the fast of the two. Arnold Tucker is in at quarterback. And just as we say that Rowan is in at fullback, he's no Jay West comes in to replace him in the Army backfield. The Notre Dame backfield, Johnny Lujak, the man with a weak angle, who made the newspaper headlines all week long as to whether he was or was not able to play today, is starting at quarterback. Emil Sitko is at right half, Terry Brennan at left, and Jim Mello at full. Marty Wendell has come in at center, George Strohmeyer has gone out. That's a change for Notre Dame. Other than that, the lineups remain as is. Notre Dame and Army have played each other every year since 1913, and what a game that first one was. In motion this time at Blanchard. The ball is given to Glenn Davis. Davis gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all he gets back to. Got back to the line of scrimmage, and he was stopped on the line of scrimmage by Billy Fisher, the left guard of Notre Dame. They had tried to mousetrap Fisher, pulled him into the center of the line, but whoever was to get him when he got in that trap didn't get him. He got out of the trap and spilled Mr. Davis. First game played between these two teams goes all the way back to 1913. It was the first forward pass ever seen in the East. A gentleman by the name of Mr. Gus Doré threw it. And a pretty well-known gentleman by the name of Newt Rockney caught it. Notre Dame beat the Army that afternoon on those passes. Single wing over the right this time. Glenn Davis again. He gives it to Blanchard. Blanchard on a shovel pass goes into the center of the line. And he may, may have picked up a first down. It's very, very close to it. If you hear a terrific roar go up from the cadets, you'll know he did. It looks like he missed it by about six inches. They're going to bring in the line sticks now. Wait and see. If a big, big roar goes up from the Army side you'll know that it is a first down. And it's going to be, I believe, about six inches shy of a first down. It is six inches shy of a first down. So it is fourth down for Army. Six inches to go. Now, you quarterbacks, what would you do? A nothing-nothing ball game. Both your teams unbeaten. You're playing for the national championship of the United States, and you have a fourth down with six inches to go on your own 44-and-a-half yard line. Would you take a chance on those six inches and maybe give it a Notre Dame if they hold you, or would you play it safe and kick Army is going to gamble. They're going to run for it. Billy West in the fullback spot this time. Ball is given to West. He goes right to the center of the line. He picks up a first down for Army. <laughs> Billy West, fullback for the United States Military Academy. The cadet team bolts his way right through the center of the line. He hit it hard. His drive had formed a wedge. He shoved his body through, and it picked up about a foot and a half. All he needed was six inches. Here's a reverse play with Doc Blanchard over his own right tackle. He, in turn, waffled it back to Billy West as West that came up to the center of the line. West picks up two yards, and he moves it up to about the Army 49-yard line. Give him a gain of three yards on that play. It'll be second down, coming up seven yards to go. There are four minutes of playing time remaining in the first period of the football game from the Yankee Stadium, and the score is Notre Dame nothing, Army nothing. Army has the ball just one yard shy of the middle of the field. It's about halfway between the two sideline stripes and just about halfway down the field. Billy West in the middle of the tee. It is Davis back for the forward pass. He pulls one over the center line to Barney Poole, the left end of Army. And that is very close to a first down. It's a completed forward pass, and Barney Poole goes high into the air and catches it on the Notre Dame 44-yard line. He's hit immediately by Johnny Collin, the right tackle of Notre Dame. And they may measure this to see whether it's another first down for Army. off two first downs in a row. That means that Notre Dame has made two first downs in this period, and so has Army. Army is, for the second time this afternoon, down into Notre Dame territory. They recovered a fumble and got down there before. Now they're working their way down. Glenn Davis in motion. Ball is back to Tucker. Tucker back for a forward pass for Army. Throws it under flat. Incomplete. Intended for Bonnie Poole. Nowhere near Mr. Poole. Poole goes high into the air, but he can't go high enough. Jimmy Mello, fullback in Notre Dame, is the only man who gets his fingers on it, and he bats it viciously down to the ground. Incomplete. Second down, 10 yards to go. The ball is resting on the Notre Dame 44-yard line of Army's ball. We have three minutes of playing time remaining in the first period, and the score is Notre Dame nothing, Army nothing. A jam-packed Yankee Stadium, 75,000 people. Largest crowd to ever see a football game in this city. Army's T formation, Glenn Davis in motion this time. Tucker takes the ball, gives it on a wide sweeping play, attempts to give it to Davis, keeps it himself when he sees that Davis isn't open. He swings around, tries to cut inside a right guard and right tackle. And he may have picked up a yard, but I don't think he did. Jim Martin, left end of Notre Dame, is the man who stopped him. It'll be third down coming up now. About nine yards still to go. Give him credit for a one-yard gain on that play. Army's ball. They have it on the Notre Dame 43-yard line. Notre Dame playing a five-man line with three men backing up that line. Way he's thrown a very unorthodox defense at these boys. Ball is back to Glenn Davis. Davis takes the ball pass. Instead gives it to Blanchard on the old Statue of Liberty. And Blanchard is thrown for a loss. He's dropped all the way back on the Notre Dame 45-yard line. 
Glenn Davis cocks his arm back as though he's going to throw a pass. He doesn't do it. Blanchard comes around behind him, takes it out of his outstretched arm, keeps on circling around the left end of the Army team, and Amos Sitko, right halfback in Notre Dame, comes sailing out of nowhere to tackle Blanchard and throws him for a three-yard loss. So it will be fourth down coming up now, about 12 yards to go, and back into punt formation for Army. Kicking for Army will be Mr. Glenn Davis. He's standing all the way back on the Army 45-yard line. Army gets ready to boot. He boots it up in the air. It is going down towards the Notre Dame goal line. It's taken on the goal line by Sitko. He's back to the 5, up to the 10, up to the 15, and he's down on the 20. Amos Sitko knocked down on the Notre Dame 20-yard line. It is Notre Dame's ball. First and 10 on the 20-yard line. And we're coming towards the end of the first period now. Referee says that Mr. Sitko reached the 22-yard line. So it'll be Notre Dame's ball. First and 10 in their own 22. Neither team's been able to gain consistently. They have an equal number of first downs. The point out to the left this time is Terry Brennan. He's some 15 yards out wide. Back for a quick forward pass, and the ball is batted down as Johnny Lujak. Lujak goes high into the air to throw to Jack Silly, but he can't get it away. He just pitches the ball out of his grasp, and as he does, Sheldon Biles, left tackle of Army, hits the ball down to the ground before it even passes the line of scrimmage. So that play had no chance of being completed whatsoever. Sheldon Biles, left tackle of Army, knocks it down and knocks it down quickly. He's a six-foot, one-inch boy, and he just reached up and tapped it down. In the meantime, here's a quarterback sneak with Johnny Lujak carrying the ball himself. He squirms through the center of a whole pile of tacklers, comes underneath the line, submarining his way through, goes from the 22 to the 24, picking up two yards for Notre Dame before he's stopped by the center of the Army line, Joe Steffi, Jim Enos, and Art Jaramata. There's a minute and five seconds remaining in the first period of the football game from the Yankee Stadium. The score is still Notre Dame nothing, Army nothing. Notre Dame out of the huddle. Notre Dame playing in their Kelly G. Green jerseys. Army responding in black jerseys with golden numerals. Kelly Brennan out to the left this time. Johnny Lujak calling his signals. Lujak back for a pass for Notre Dame. He throws a long pass. It's a long one way up the field. And it's intended for Jim Martin. It's not good. Thrown all the way back from the 10. It comes all the way down to the Army 40. A 50-yard pass sails through the sky, and it is not good. Both Blake and Leahy getting ready to make multiple substitutions. We have about 45 seconds remaining. In the first period of this game, and it looks like they're both going to start new teams for the second period. But get your pencils and erasers out if you're keeping up with these lineups. It is fourth down, nine yards to go. Notre Dame's ball in their own 24. Johnny Lujak is back in punt formation. He is standing back on the Irish 15. He's going to boot. He does. He gets a beauty up in the air. Way back to take it as Arnold Tucker on the Army 25. He's back to the Cadets 30, up to the 35. Stays on his feet, stays to the 40. Gets to the 45, and he's knocked down on the 43-yard line. Arnold Tucker runs it all the way from the Army 20 up to the Army 43. And here come some Army players out of the playing field just as they start across the field. Red Blake stands on his feet and says, wait a minute, boys, come on back here. Now they are running out. There's a new Army team going into the game right now. There was only 30 seconds remaining to be played in this first period. Left end, Bob Folsom, left tackle, Al Anderson, left guard, Jack Ray at center. Lives is going in at right guard, Frank Barnes at right tackle, Harold Tamsel at right end, Jim Roars. At quarterback, Arnold Gallifa. At left halfback, Jack Shelley. At fullback, Bill Gustafson. At right halfback, Billy West. West is the only one stays in. Notre Dame has not made their substitutions as yet they may after the next play. They've got their boys all ready to go in. Army just substituted a new team with one exception. We called the players off as they came to the ball game. It's now Army's ball. First down, 10 yards to go with 25 seconds remaining. In this first period of the football game, Davis is still in that ball game. Davis carrying the ball this time on his way, squirms his way to the center of the line, twisting and bobbing, and he goes all the way out of the Notre Dame 45 before he stopped. Glenn Davis still in that ball game. We had taken him out a moment ago, replaced him by Jack Shelley. Blake waved him back into the game. Glave Davis went back into the ball game and carried the ball on that play and reeled it down to the Notre Dame 46 yard line. There's five seconds remaining in this period, and then this period may be all over. There's three seconds, two seconds, one second. There it is, end of the first period. Davis had trotted back onto the field after he'd been removed from the game by Earl Blake, coach of Army. He went back into the ball game and just picked up about eight big yards for the cadets on the first running play. Army's first string backfield is going back in now as the teams change sides. They were only out for about 15 seconds, so Davis, Rowan, Tucker, and Blanchard are all back in the ball game at the moment. They were only out for one play. As the teams change sides, let's listen to that Army band. on the field. 
field, so we better give you these while time is still out. Here's the new Notre Dame squad running on right now. Left end, Bobby Scoglin. Left tackle, Casper Erden. Left guard, Billy Fisher. Center, Mary Marty Wendell. Right guard, Fred Robey. Right tackle, Georgie Sullivan. Right end, Frank Kozakowski. At quarterback, George Ratterman. Left halfback, Jerry Cowig. At fullback, Johnny Pinelli. And at right halfback, Mike Swistowitz. There's a new Notre Dame team, and we've given you the changes for Army. It's the new Army line and the old Army backfield. Actually, the Army backfield, three of them were out for one play. Army's ball now. It is second down, less than three yards to go. The ball is given in a reverse to Glenn Davis. Davis is fading bay way back to throw a long forward pass. He touches down and completed to Doc Blanchard. Blanchard takes it all the way down on the Notre Dame 25 yard line. He's running the ball on the Notre Dame 23 yard line. And it's Army's ball, first and 10, down on the Irish 23. Doc Blanchard Kelly catching, and it's moved the ball down to the Notre Dame 23 yard line. Army's ball now, first and 10, down on the Notre Dame 23. Strohmeyer stays in the center. Marty Wendell goes out for Notre Dame. Arnold Tucker calling these signals. Tucker takes the ball. He's fading back to jump up pass. Instead, he gives it to Davis. Davis plays back to pass. Can't get it away. He reverses his field. He's back on the 30. He's knocked down on the 27 for a loss of four yards. Arnold Tucker tried to pass. Couldn't do it. To a lateral to Glenn Davis. Davis played it back to pass. He couldn't do it. And Davis was finally tapped all the way back on the Notre Dame 27 yard line. So will history repeat as we start the second period of the football game from the Yankee Stadium. Notre Dame has stopped Army once this afternoon deep down in their own territory. Will they be able to do it again? Johnny Lujak comes back in at quarterback. George Ratterman goes out for Notre Dame. Both the Frank Leahy and Red Blake refusing to take chances on a second string backfield at such a crucial moment. Army's first stringers are all in there now. All the backs. They get a second string line. And it's a fumble in the Army backfield. Glenn Davis picks it up. Throws it out on the planet. And it's a Bob Folsom. Folsom can't go high enough. Incomplete. Glenn Davis, for the moment, looked like he might have made a fumble in the backfield. The ball started to squirt away from his arms. As it did, he grasped it himself and didn't let the ball touch the ground. So, actually, there was no fumble. Comes that Army first string line back into. Blake is taking no chances. Army's first string line going back on the playing field right now. That puts that line almost back the way it was before. We'll call it out for you when they make their changes and we see exactly who's going in for whom. It'll be Barney Poole back in at left end. Sheldon Biles at left tackle. Al Tazel may stay in at right tackle. Frank Barnes at right guard. Billy Oman stays in at center. Jeremiah goes back in. Polberg goes back in. Those are all changes in the Army line. Most of the first team is back in. Here's a quick shovel pass thrown out to Glenn Davis. Davis gets a lateral to Blanchard. Blanchard fakes back to try and throw a forward pass. Can't get it away. And he's trapped 10 yards behind the line of scrimmage. He's knocked all the way back on the Notre Dame's 39-yard line by Bobby Stoglin, the left end of Notre Dame. Blanchard and Davis seesawing back and forth with that ball, trying to make up their mind who was going to run with it or who was going to pass. Neither one passes. And for the second running play in a row, this Notre Dame team, which refuses to let Army get too deep in its territory, is pushing Army backwards. It is now fourth down, 24 yards to go. Army's ball on the Notre Dame. 39-yard line back in safety position for Army is Ashbow. Russ Ashbow comes in for Swistowitz. He's standing all the way back, almost on the Notre Dame goal line. Kicking is Davis. Davis boots it high in the air, waiting to take it to Jerry Cowley. Cowley takes it on the Notre Dame 5. He's up to the 10, the 15, and he is knocked back to the 12. Jerry Cowley, left half back of Notre Dame, took that catch almost on the goal line. So it's Notre Dame ball, first and 10 on the Notre Dame 20. Well, let's call it on the Notre Dame 30, 13-yard line. Bryant comes in at right tackle. Art Gentleman is back in at right guard for Army. Both squads have got their first team backfields almost completely back into the ball game. The only change might be Army has a few seconds fingers still left in that line, but not many. We'll go down this Army line in just a second. In the meantime, it's Notre Dame's ball. Johnny Lujak calling these signals. Jerry Collig at one wing back. Russ Ashville at the other. Johnny Finelli at fullback. So three of those Notre Dame backfield stars are second. Down on the 18-yard line. He comes from the 13 to the 18-yard line, a gain of at least five yards on that play. Maybe a little bit longer. Let's see where the referee puts that ball down. He puts it a little closer to the 19-yard line for a gain of six yards on the play. So it will be Notre Dame's ball second and four. Army, Hank Bolberg's in at right end. Goble Bryan at right tackle. Art Jeremiah at right guard. Jimmy Enos at center. Joe Steffi at left guard. Sheldon Biles at left tackle. Barney Poole at left end. Tucker's at quarterback. Rowan's at right half. Blanchard's at left half. Davis is at full. Army's first team is back in the game. Billy Gompers comes in at right halfback for Notre Dame. 
Johnny Lujak calling his signals. Lujak back, fakes the throw, pass, elects to run with the ball, and Jeff Davis on his feet goes from the plane up to the 24-yard line, and he's knocked down on the 24, twisting and bobbing as he weaves his way on a complete spin of play, which found him faking it to give it to Gary Cowley. He did he kept it himself, and he reels off a first down for Notre Dame. It is Notre Dame's ball, first and 10 on their own 24-yard line. Score of this game is Notre Dame nothing, Army nothing. And we are now... Two minutes of playing time into the second third of the football game. Deployed way out to the right is Jerry Collard. He's 15 yards out to the right of the Notre Dame end. Johnny Lujak here's the ball this time to Coppers. Coppers into the center of the line, and he is hit by a stonewall of tacklers. Jen Amato, Jimmy Enos, Joe Steffi. The entire center of the Army team stopping cold. Gain a one yard on that play. Red Blake getting ready to put back his second team. He's getting ready to move in his second team line. He probably will keep back a first team backfield, but a second team line. At the moment, he's got the whole Army first team in. Notre Dame's ball into second and nine now. Blue Jack calling these signals. He shovel passes it to Jerry Cowley. Cowley coming around the short center line, stays on his feet, goes past the 30, steps out of bounds on the 33. Jerry Cowley runs it up to the 33. And that's a gain of about, well, we'll call that a good six-yard gain. A gain of one yard on the previous play and six on this. Makes a total of seven. Leaves him still between two and three yards shy. Jerry Cowley on a spinner, moving around from the left side of the line, cutting just outside his own right tackle and staying just inbound. Moves the ball up to the Notre Dame 33-yard line, where it is now third down, less than two yards to go, about two and a half yards to go. And here's a line buck with Johnny Pennelly, the fullback, bucking his way right on the side of the line with his head down and his knees driving high. He tried to knife his way through. Found no opening to push into. He lunged forward with a final thrust and picked up maybe one yard. But I think it leaves it still shy of a first down by inches. Line sticks are being brought in to measure whether this is or is not a first down. They're going to measure this awfully, awfully close. It is a first down. <laughs> Notre Dame picks up a first down by a scant inch. And it's Notre Dame ball first and 10 on the Irish 34-yard line. Army's playing a six-man line now. Army's man in motion this time with Jerry Cowig as he ran laterally across the field. Johnny Lujak calling his signals. Notre Dame running out of a T formation with a man in motion. Balance line. It is Lujak back for the forward pass. Cox his arm back. Can't find his man. Elects to run. Now he does throw a long pass. And it's completed. It's completed about the body. Stoltman all the way down to the Army 40 yard line. Stoltman goes high into the air. He catches it on the Army 40. He's hit immediately by Glenn Davis. It's Notre Dame's ball first and 10 on the Army 40 yard line. And for the first time this afternoon, Notre Dame is down in Army territory. Notre Dame cheering section. Diagonally across the field from where the ball is resting is yelling, Go on, Notre Dame, keep going. And the Army rooters are yelling, Take it and stop him. Here comes Notre Dame on a wide open formation over to the right with Scoglin deployed out right this time. The ball is given this time on a direct line back to Johnny Finelli. Finelli in through the center of the line and he goes through for about five to seven yards before he's brought down. Squirming his way all the way down to the 20, let's call it the 33 yard line. The 33 yard line. He stopped on the 33. Again, it's seven yards on that way. It'll be second down coming up three yards to go, and Notre Dame is running through the Army team right now. There's a scoreless ball game in the Yankee Stadium, but the Irish are deep down into Army territory. Ball is given on the cross to Jerry Cowley. Cowley coming around the center line. He's back to the 30, down to the 25, down to the 20, stays on his feet. He's down to the 15-yard line, and he's knocked down to the 14-yard line. Jerry Cowley, left half back of Notre Dame, goes all the way down to the Army 14-yard line before Arnold Tucker's safety man for Army can come up and stop it, and Army asks for timeout. Listen to this crowd in the Yankee Stadium. Time has been called. And Blake, who was about to make wholesale substitutions a moment ago, decides to bank on his first team. He can't take them out now. Notre Dame has the ball down on the Army. He's caught at the 13 and a half yard line. First down, 10 yards to go. And so that our stations may properly identify themselves across this nation and overseas as well. We pause briefly for station identification. Back in the Yankee Stadium in New York City, 75,000 people seated, watching, fascinated by a brilliant football game between unbeaten Army and unbeaten Notre Dame. Army has had two scoring opportunities already this afternoon. They have not been able to prevail upon either one of them to make them good. Notre Dame has its first scoring opportunity at the moment as they've driven all the way down to the cadets' 13 and a half yard line with a first down and 10 yards to go. We have 11 minutes of playing time remaining in the first half of the football game. The score is Army nothing, Notre Dame nothing. This is Phil Stern speaking from the Yankee Stadium. Time is out. The Army band strikes up and strikes down just as quick as they do. 
We were just about to go down there to pick up an army chair, and here comes one knife. Time is still out. Let's listen. Time is back in now. Red Blake is changing his defense. He's been playing a five-man defense. He goes into a six-man line. Deployed way out to the right this time is Jerry Cowig. Johnny Lujak calling these signals for Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Johnny Lujak back through a forward pass. He throws it completed down to the 10-yard line. It's caught immediately by Cowig, who's deployed way out to the right. He catches it on the 10, and he's knocked down immediately on the 10 by Arnold Tucker. A completed forward pass is good for three and a half yards. It'll be second down coming up now. Notre Dame's ball. Six and a half yards to go for the first down. Ten yards to go for the touchdown. Been a long time since the Irish have gotten one. Are they going to get one today? They didn't score in 44, and they didn't score in 45. Cowing out to the right. Blue Jack calling these signals. Johnny back for a pass. Instead of passing it, he gives it to Johnny Pennelly, the fullback, and Pennelly drives forward to about, I believe, the six-yard line. That's awfully close to being a first down. They may measure this to see whether it is or is not. Ball is resting on the five-yard line. Ball is all the way down to the Army five-yard line, and it is one yard shy of a first down. So it is third down, one yard to go. Army is using two centers in now. Billy Yeoman and Jimmy Enos both backing up the center of the Army line. It is third down, one yard to go. Jerry Cowling in the tailback this time. A deceptive quarterback sneak this time with Johnny Lujak trying to carry the ball. He may have gone to the four-yard line, and they're going to measure to see whether this is or is not a first down. Four yards away from the Irish is a potential touchdown. They're going to bring the line sticks in to measure this to see whether it is or is not a first down. It is not a first down. It misses it by inches. It is fourth down. About 12 inches to go for a first down. 12 inches to go for a first down. The ball is resting on the Army four-yard line. This is a play that can mean the whole ball game. Notre Dame settles back now. Johnny Lujak quicks a flip pass to Jerry Cowley. Cowley going on the side of the line. Lateral's over to Billy Goffers. Goffers is back to the four. The three-yard line. He's knocked out of bounds on the three, but there's a flag on the play. Hang on to your hat. He picked up enough yardage for a first down, but there's a clipping penalty on that play. There's a clipping penalty on that play, and it all depends upon who it's called against. See who that is called against. He'd run the ball down to the three-yard line, which was enough. It was the one yard they needed for a first down, but it depends upon who that penalty is called against. Clipping is called against... See exactly who it is. It's called against Notre Dame. It is called against Notre Dame. Army refuses the penalty. It nullifies the game made on the play, and Army takes over first and ten on their own four. Army's ball, first and ten on their own four, thanks to a penalty which nullifies the last play, takes back the gain which was made by Notre Dame, which would have earned them a first down, and gives the ball over to Army because that was a fourth down coming up. Army naturally refuses the penalty because by taking the 15-yard penalty, they'd have given Notre Dame another down. They didn't want to do that, and they wanted the ball, they got it. It's Army's ball, first and ten on their own four. Yeomans is out, Enos is in at center for Army. Billy West is in at right halfback. Here's a running play with West carrying the ball for Army. He moves it from the four up to approximately the eight-yard line. And it's Army's ball now, second and about six yards to go. Army deep back on their own. Well, let's call that the nine-yard line instead of the eight-yard line. Again, a five yards on that play. It's Billy West, the right halfback of Army. Bolts his way between right guard and center. Notre Dame with a golden opportunity. Loses the ball four yards away from a potential touchdown. Army running out of the T formation. In motion this time is Mr. Blanchard. Davis carrying the ball. Davis moving over the short side of the line. He crosses the 10-yard line. He is hit down on the 12-yard line. A gain of about three yards on that play. Joe Signiago, the left guard of Notre Dame, who just came in at left guard, incidentally, and Casper Erden, the left tackle of the men who stopped that play. It will be third down coming up now. It was a gain of one yard on that play, so it'll be four yards to go. Army's ball. They come out of the huddle, third and four. They're going back into a punt formation. Billy West is standing all the way back on the in the Army end zone. He's standing one foot in the end zone. He'll probably kick from the goal line if he's going to kick. He does. He's kicking in a third down. He boots it up the field. It's not a particularly brilliant kick. It rolls up to the middle of the field. It's taken by Jerry Cowell. Notre Dame on his own 50. He's trying to get away from one tackle. Can't do it. And he's kicked down on the Army 48-yard line. Jerry Cowell takes it on the 50 and is knocked down on the Army 48. So, that clipping penalty stopped Notre Dame from having a first down on the Army 3-yard line. And on the exchange, or rather on the punt made by Army on the third succeeding play, the cadets booted the Irish all the way back to the 49-yard line, where it is now Notre Dame's ball first and 10 on the 49-yard line, and it's Army's 49, although it's Notre Dame's ball. Cowie in motion this time. Lujak back for the forward pass. He throws it incomplete. Johnny Lujak going for Bob Skoglin. He can't hit Skoglin. The ball comes closer to hitting Billy West, the right halfback of Army. Incomplete. We have half of the second period remaining to be played. And the score is Army nothing, Notre Dame nothing. The game reaching you from the Yankee Stadium in New York City. Temperature is down in the 50s. 
sun is trying to come through. It was a murky day, but it's cleared up now. There's no breeze to stop either team. Cowling in motion this time. Lou Jack back for another pass for Notre Dame. He throws it incomplete. He throws it to Jerry Cowling, the left halfback of Notre Dame. One of those short passes right over the center of the line. It is not good. Well, the ball is returned to the line of scrimmage, and that will bring up the third down. Still leave 10 yards to go. Two incomplete passes. Barney Poole, left end of Army, dropped back on that play and knocked that ball down. Incomplete. Seven and a half minutes of playing time remaining in the second period. The score is Army nothing, Notre Dame nothing. Here come the fighting Irish out of the huddle. They run over to the right this time. Jerry Cowig in a single wing over the right, and Cowig gets the point out wide. It's Blue Jack taking to go back for the forward pass. Gives it to Johnny Pennelly. Pennelly into the center of the line, and he may have gained two yards. Johnny Pennelly, fullback at Notre Dame, goes into the center of the line. He picked up about two yards. Ran it to the Army 47-yard line. And now Junior Davis is going back in safety position for Army. Since this brings up a fourth down and it's eight yards to go, he senses that Notre Dame will have to kick. Notre Dame back into a punt formation. And Davis is back in one position, one safety position, and Tucker in the other. Lou Jack is back in kick formation for Notre Dame. Lou Jack will boot from the 45, his own. He kicks, it's up in the air. He's driving it across the field towards Glenn Davis. Davis takes it all the way back on his own goal line. He's up to the 5, the 10, the 15, stays on his feet, goes to the 20, and he's knocked down on the 23-yard line. Glenn Davis comes up to the 23, and his army's ball on their own 23. Fred Robar, right guard of Army, or rather of Notre Dame, is the man who made that tackle. There are six minutes and 35 seconds of playing time remaining in the first half of this football game from the Yankee Stadium. And the score is Army nothing, Notre Dame nothing. Unbeaten Army, 25 wins behind them. They haven't been stopped since December of 1943. And unbeaten Notre Dame rolling along towards its first unbeaten season since 38. Doc Blanchard, left half back of Army, pulls his way into the center of the line. With a fatal lunge, he plunges forward, goes for a gain of approximately four yards as he moves the ball. Up to the 26-yard line. The ball is resting on the 22, just shy of the 23. So it's a gain of about three and a half yards. It'll be second down, coming up six and a half yards to go. It is Army's ball deep down in the cadets' territory, 15 yards in from the northern side of the playing field. This field runs east by west. Billy West, incidentally, the right halfback is deployed way out to the right this time. A cross butt with Doc Blanchard, powering his way through the center of the Notre Dame line. He just about reaches the 30-yard line. For a gain of about four more yards, that will bring up the third down, leave two yards shy, and Army is beginning to move with Mr. Blanchard, Doc Blanchard. All American fullback last year now, playing left halfback for Army, pulling his way over his own left tackle. George Sullivan, the right tackle of Notre Dame, is the man who stopped him. Score is Army nothing, Notre Dame nothing. And here comes Army out of the huddle very quickly. Arnold Tucker calling these signals. In motion this time is Blanchard. Blanchard to Davis. Davis into the center of the line, and I believe he picked up a number of first down. He reels forward from the 30 up to about the 33-yard line. He's knocked down on the 33 as Glenn Davis, who is not supposed to be a linebacker, puts his head down, dives to the center of the line, and gives Army a first down on their own 33-yard line. The Nets have a 33, have a first down on their own 33. Score is Army nothing, Notre Dame nothing. An airtight ball game from the Yankee Stadium, which finds Notre Dame playing a five-man line on defense and Army playing a six-man line. This is Chesterton Radio, your home for podcasts of works by G.K. Chesterton, plus drama, comedy, mystery, science fiction, big bands, and much more. The soundtrack to your Chesterton day at chestertonradio.com. Here comes Army out of the huddle. Army is the bigger of these two teams. They outweigh Notre Dame about five men per five pounds per man. In motion this time is Davis. Ball is given back to Tucker. Tucker fading back for a long, long early pass. He throws it down, and it is not good. A long pass thrown by Arnold Tucker intended for Barney Poole is not good. Barney Poole racing down the field trying to get under it. Finds it knocked out of his hands at the last moment by Billy Goppers. Billy Goppers, the right halfback of Notre Dame, went high into the air and knocked that one down. It was intended for Barney Poole, the left end of Army. Barney Poole out of Gloucester, Massachusetts, standing six feet three inches tall, racing Billy Goppers. A five foot nine inch lad all the way down the field. Poole weighs 215. That's heavy for an end, but he's a wonderful end. He's one of three brothers and four sisters, all of whom have distinguished themselves in sports. Barney's best-known brother is Jim Poole, the New York Giant end. All right, here we go. Deep formation for Army. The second down, 10 yards to go. It's Tucker back for another pass for Army. Instead of passing, he elects to run with the ball. Tucks it back into his tummy. Cross with the 35, reaches the 37, and is knocked down on the 37-yard line. Again, gain of about three yards on that play. Arnold Tucker fading back for a forward pass. Mind you, can't get rid of that ball. There's nobody to pass to. Tucks the ball back into his tummy and starts forward right through the center of the line and picks up four yards before he's brought down. He's brought down on the 43, and he began from the 39. John Pinelli, roving fullback, defensive fullback for Notre Dame, brings him down. Five minutes of playing time remaining in the 
First half of the football game from the Yankee Stadium. The National Broadcasting Company sending it your way. Single wing over the right this time. Davis in motion. Ball given to Tucker. Tucker to West. West to Blanchard. Blanchard goes from the 40, from the 39 up to approximately the 41. Gain of two yards on that play before he stopped. That was an off-tackle drive. It was Tucker to Davis. Davis to Blanchard. And the play finally wound up on the Army 41-yard line before it was finally set down by Stoglund and Irvin. It moves between the Army right tackle and right end. It is now fourth down, coming up two yards to go, and what is Army going to do? Fourth and two. Notre Dame thinking they're going to kick it, dropping two safety men back. A nothing-nothing ball game. Standing back in front formation is Glenn Davis. Junior is standing back in his own 31-yard line. He's waiting for the pass from center. He takes it. He boots it. Way up in the air goes the kick. It's coming all the way back to the Notre Dame 20 yard line. It's taken on the 20 and total on the 20 yard line. It's picked up on the 25 by Jerry Lujak. Lujak stays on his feet, gets to the 30, goes to the 35, and he's knocked down on the 36. Jerry Cowick fumbled that ball for Notre Dame, and Lujak recovered. Cowick fumbled that ball, and Jenny Lujak came running around to cover for him. Picked it up, and it was down around his ankles. Lujak ran it from the 20 up to the 36, and it is now Notre Dame ball first and 10 on their own 36. Here comes Brennan in for Cowley, who just fumbled that ball. Gary Brennan's replacing him. Notre Dame ball, first and ten on the Irish 36 yard line. Here comes Notre Dame out of the huddle now. We have only a few moments remaining in this half. The ball is given to Johnny Finelli. Finelli drives over the right side of his line between right tackle and right end. He moves from about the 36 to the 39 for the gain of three yards. And here comes Army's second line back into the ball game again. We'll call these out for you. A moment ago, we gave them to you. Here they are. Jim Roars comes back in at right end. Harold Tavdell comes in at right tackle. Roy Drury at right guard. Billy Yeomans is in at center. Jack Ray at left guard. Alex Anderson is in at left tackle. And Tommy Hayes at left end. The backfield stays exactly as it was. That's Tucker, Blanchard, West, and Davis. Army puts a new line into the game, but keeps their... They have their second string line in and their first team backfield. There's some changes for Notre Dame. Jack Zilly comes in at right end. Frank Kazakowski goes out. So both of these teams have their second string lines in. Jim Martin's in his left end. Stoglin is out. Notre Dame and Army both have the second team lines on the field and both have their first team backfield. Uh, two minutes and 30 seconds remaining to be played in the first half of this football game. It's Notre Dame's ball. Second down, seven yards to go on the Irish 39-yard line. A quick opening play. Terry Brennan takes the ball. I believe Army recovered. I think Army recovered down on the Notre Dame 34-yard line. Tommy Hayes, the left end of Army, was in on that. And it's Army's ball first and 10 on the Notre Dame 35-yard line. Ball first and ten on the Notre Dame 35 yard line with two minutes remaining to be played in the first half. Notre Dame has throttled Army so far twice when they've been down there. Will they be able to do it again? This time it is Blanchard in motion. The ball is given to Glenn Davis Jr. tries to block his way through the center of the line and he gains it most two yards. He goes from the 35 to the 33. Jim Martin left end of Notre Dame is the man who stops him. Again, a two yards on that play. Blanchard's in at one of the wing backs, Davis at the other. Billy West is in at fullback and Arnold Tucker is calling the signals. Time, I think, may be called by Army. A minute and 45 seconds remaining in the first half of the football game from the Yankee Stadium. And Arnie playing alert, smart, heads-up football. Recovers the fumble on the Notre Dame 35 and has a golden opportunity. 33 yards ahead, lie a touchdown. Billy Omens goes out, live stake, comes in a center for Arnie. Tucker calling these signals. Let's see who's going to be in motion this time. It's Davis in motion. Tucker back for the forward pass. He throws it out and it's not good. It's in it for Jim Roars. It was not good. Arnold Tucker passing. Jim Martin, the left end of Notre Dame, knocks the ball down. Incomplete. Arnold Tucker fading back to throw a pass. It is third down, eight yards to go. The ball is resting on the Notre Dame 33-yard line. Russ Ashborough comes in at right halfback for Billy Goffers for Notre Dame. Notre Dame backfield is Lou Jack, Brennan, Ashbow, and Pinelli. Here comes Army out of the huddle now. There's a minute and 35 seconds remaining in this half. It's Army's ball. Third down, eight yards to go in the Notre Dame 33-yard line. It's Tucker back for the forward pass for the cadet. He cocks his iron back, and his ball is not good. Intended to snap for Tommy Hayes, the left end of Army. High into the air goes Hayes. He's knocked down, and so is the play. Tommy Hayes standing six foot one inch tall, weighing 200 pounds out of Hastings, Nebraska. Has the ball knocked right out of his grasp by Terry Brennan, the left halfback of the University of Notre Dame. Terry Brennan, six-footer, 175-pounder from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. He's only a 17-year-old lad. He was an honor student in his first year at Notre Dame. He loves to play the piano. He really tickled the Ivories that time. And incidentally, tickled the hearts of every Notre Dame fan when he knocked that pass down. Jim Roars goes in at right end for Army Poole, for Barney Poole at right end for Army. Arnold Tucker fading back this time for another pass for the cadets. It is fourth down, eight yards to go. There goes a long Army pass. It's going all the way down to the goal line, and it's not good. Intended for Tommy Hayes, and it's not good. Notre Dame takes over. 
First and ten on their own 34-yard line. Russ Ashborough faded back and knocked that pass down. Army's passing attack is not good. Here's a change at right end for Army. Barney Poole coming in. And so Notre Dame takes over with a minute and 30 seconds remaining to be played. Notre Dame picked up two yards, but they were still shy eight yards of what they needed to get a first down. And so the golden opportunity that the cadets from West Point had found themselves suddenly, in, when they found themselves suddenly in possession with the ball, of the ball, thanks to recovered fumble, has now evaporated in the thin air. The opportunity is gone. Notre Dame has the ball first and ten on the Irish 33-yard line. Johnny Pinelli is in at fullback. Johnny Lujak at quarterback. Time has been called with a minute and a half remaining in the first half of the football game. The cadets start to sing, the band starts to play, and we start to listen. Stadium in New York City, jam-packed with 75,000 spectators, the largest crowd that's ever seen a football game in this stadium, or for that matter, in any stadium in New York City, and that's due to the increased seating arrangements for the Saturday, for this afternoon's game. They have bleacher seats down that they have never had before, behind the goalposts, and the side of the field that Notre Dame is defending at the moment. It is now Notre Dame's ball, first and ten on their own 33. Billy Gompers comes in at right halfback, Rush Ashborough goes out for Notre Dame. Here is the T formation. Johnny Lujak fading back to throw a pass for the fighting Irish. He touches that back. Looks for the man that was a long pass. It's run over the center line. Intercepted by Arnold Tucker of Army. Tucker takes it on the Notre Dame 40. He's back to the 35. Takes it a seat. Goes down to the 30. Down to the 25. With a minute and 15 seconds remaining. Army again has the ball deep down in Notre Dame territory. When Arnold Tucker intercepts for Army. being brought up the field to the Notre Dame 44-yard line. They claim that Tucker, when he made that pass interception, stepped out of bounds on the 44. So, Army gets possession of the ball thanks to the brilliant pass interception by Arnold Tucker, but despite the fact that he ran it down to the 27, actually the ball is going over to Army on the 44-yard line because when Mr. Tucker made that interception, he went high up into the air and stepped out of bounds on the 44. Billy West comes back in his fullback for Army. Coming back in at right halfback for Notre Dame is Russ Ashburn. The clock has been stopped. There's a minute and ten seconds remaining to be played in the first half of the football game. Arnold Tucker just made an interception for Army, and the cadets have the ball first and ten on the Notre Dame 44-yard line. Notre Dame throwing a six-man line against Army. Army's been playing a six-man line most of the afternoon. Notre Dame a five-man line. Notre Dame is throwing a six-man up into that line because they figure with a minute and ten seconds remaining in the first half, Army is going to pass. They want to rush the passer if they can Make him throw those passes away. A minute and ten seconds. Score is Army, nothing. Notre Dame, nothing. Arnold Tucker calling the signals. Davis at right half, Blanchard at left half, and Billy West at fullback. And we're just about ready to resume play. Red Blake pulling the strings from the Army side, and Frank Leahy nervously pacing up and down in front of the Notre Dame bench. Both of these men naturally have a great deal at stake. Red Blake is protect, protecting an undefeated record which extends all the way back to 1943. And this is Leahy's first year back at Notre Dame after being in the Navy. And Mr. Leahy has an unbeaten season staring him in the face if he can get by Army. He has still other teams to go, but this figures to be his biggest obstacle. Goldberg, Aretha Fulberg in motion at this time. It's Tucker back for a pass for Army. He swarmed under and he can't get it away. He's dropped back on the Notre Dame 49-yard line. As Jack Silly, left hand of Notre Dame, comes out of nowhere to make that tackle and hits him down. A loss of five yards on that play. Now there's 50 seconds. The clock is ticking away. Army is not stopping this clock. Now there's only 45 seconds remaining to be played. Normal procedure would be to stop that clock. It is now second down, 16 yards to go. Army's ball on the Notre Dame 49-yard line. We've only got 40 seconds remaining in the first half of this football game. It's scoreless to date. Arnold Tucker back for another pass. Instead, he gives it to Glenn Davis. Davis is fading back to ball pass, and he's hit all the way back on the Army 40-yard line. He is thrown for an 11-yard loss by Jack Silly, the right end of Notre Dame. Notre Dame is swarming through to make this pass or get rid of that ball. Now there's only 20 seconds remaining to be played in the first half. All these attempted passes are not even getting away. Now there's only 15 seconds. Now there's only 14, 13, 12, 11, 10 the clock has finally been stopped now. Now the clock has started again. 
Here comes Arnie out of the huddle very quickly. This may be the last play. There's only three seconds remaining. It's Arnold Tucker faking the pass. He's going to run with the ball. He stays on the feet. He breaks in the curve. The 50. He's still on the feet. He's down to the 45. He's standing up. He's down to the 40. And he's knocked down on the 35 yard line. He's slid forward to the 40 at the 30 yard line. He's knocked down on the 30. And I think that is the last play of the first half. Arnold Tucker, knowing that everybody was expecting a pass, elects to carry that ball. Runs it 25 yards down the field. He's finally knocked down on the Notre Dame 30 yard line as the half ends. And the score at the end of the first half is. Army nothing, Notre Dame nothing. Arnold Tucker fading back to attempt to throw a pass, pulls the whole Notre Dame defense in, except those men who were fading back to cover for that pass, and then he starts to run with the ball. As he runs, the defensive men who are waiting way back to knock the ball down have to come racing up to try and bring him down. They catch him on the 34. He slithers forward to the 30. He stopped on the 30 at the half end, and the score is Army nothing, Notre Dame nothing, on a very, very exciting first half. Uh, Red Blake is walking off the field with Arnold Tucker, a man who just made that brilliant run and who's called a whale of a football game so far for the cadets. As for Johnny Lujak, Mr. Johnny Lujak, as you may well know, is a man who's supposed to have a weak ankle. Here we have a gentleman we'd like you to meet who's coming right in here. He's an Army man, and he ought to be kind of proud of what Army has done this afternoon. Back not too many years ago, Army had one of the all-time All-Americans, Ed Garbage. He was probably as fine a football player as the cadets at West Point have ever had. Ed's in our broadcasting box at the moment, and I'd like Ed to take over this NBC microphone, and if he will, give us his interpretation of the football game as he's seen it. Ladies and gentlemen, the former All-American of the United States Military Academy, Ed Garbage. Well, Bill, it'll be an awful long time before the 74,000 people who are lucky enough to be here at this game today will see another one just like it. There's certainly two great football teams out there in the field today, and they're playing in one of the great rivalries of college football. Well, attention has been terrific here all day. As a matter of fact, when we came into the stadium, you could feel the, the tension in the air. And that tension grew greater as the two teams were practicing out in the field. And it really didn't stop growing until uh, both the Army and Notre Dame had fumbled one time in, in the early part of the game. Well, the tension is still here. And the play has been terrific all afternoon. It's pretty hard to pick out which team is the greater at this time because they're both playing, playing top-notch football. The, the line play has been terrific. The tackling has been fierce and the blocking ferocious. But the game has been a clean one. Up to now, I believe the uh, Army can be very proud of the te- showing its team has made. I have never seen the build-up as it was for this game. And it was a terrific strain to put both the teams under, but they're both playing like real champions. And whichever one does come out victorious today is sure to be the champion. I'm awfully glad. I believe every Army supporter and every Army player is glad that Johnny Lujak has been in the game the whole first half. And when I heard the stories about his injury, I wondered whether it was one of those bear stories they used to use in the olden days when I was playing the game. But I guess it wasn't. I guess Lou Jack did hurt his ankles, but he got it fixed up pretty darn quickly. And he's playing a really great game. Bill, it's a pleasure to be here in the booth with you. And I'm, the, the next best thing to seeing a game is to hear you broadcast one. And, I, and I, know, I know that the best team will win this afternoon. And, of course, I'm a little partial. I want to see the Army win. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Ed Garvey, former All-American of the United States Military Academy. The Notre Dame band has marched out in the center of the playing field, and we're going to fix it down there so you can hear this swell musical organization. Let's listen.
faced the Army Routing Section and saluted the cadets. As you can hear in the background, they are whistling Army's favorite marching song. Now the Notre Dame Band, which was formed in a complete circle of a compass, is counter-marching, still playing the Army marching song. And we'll listen, and the next trick they do, we'll come right back here to tell you just what it is. It's the Notre Dame Band at halftime in the Army Notre Dame game. It's a nothing-nothing game. 75,000 people seated in the Yankee Stadium watching the tricks done by this band. Microphone. They're playing the song of the vagabonds, marching down towards the western goal line, the goal line which was just a moment ago threatened by an Army team, but successfully defended by Notre Dame. May I tell you, it's halftime at the Yankee Stadium, and we're coming back here in just a moment to bring you more of a word's eye picture of what's going on, but in the meantime, across this nation, so that our station may properly identify themselves, we pause for station identification. Stadium, ladies and gentlemen, this is Bill Stern speaking. It's Army nothing, Notre Dame nothing. We're halftime between the game now, or rather between the halves of the game. The Notre Dame band is parading and at the moment playing Tura Lura Lura as they march down underneath what was the Irish goalpost. Perhaps we can listen and hear them. band music for just a moment to tell you something that the huge crowd is getting a terrific kick out of. Army's two mascots, their mules, and Army has two mules, a full-sized mule and a little midget mule standing some three and a half feet off the ground, given to the United States Military Academy by the ambassador from Ecuador. These two mules have been brought into the middle of the playing field, and they are being introduced to the little Irish terrier, Clashmore Mike, the Notre Dame mascot. And Clashmore Mike isn't one bit afraid of those big mules. He's barking and snapping at the mule's legs. And the crowd's getting a big laugh out of it. Now the Notre Dame band is marching up the field playing when Irish eyes are smiling. And they're playing the famous Irish song when the Irish backs go marching by. Let's listen. see what they're going to do, and if we can pick up what they are doing, they're facing away from our microphones now, towards the opposite side of the Yankee Stadium, they are facing the Notre Dame rooting section. Incidentally, we have some scores of other ball games, which we will give you, as soon as we're sure we're not going to interrupt something that you prefer to hear. Columbus, Ohio, for instance, or rather from New York City, I should say, Pennsylvania is leading Columbia 13 to nothing in the first period. Virginia is leading Princeton 6 to nothing also in the first period. Lehigh is leading NYU 3 to nothing in the first half. Yale is leading Brown 7 to nothing at the end of the first period. In the first period, Boston College nothing, Georgetown nothing. In the first period, Harvard 14, Dartmouth nothing. In the first period, Penn State 7, Temple nothing. Duke 6, Wake Forest nothing. Also in the first period, Rutgers 6, Lafayette nothing in the first period. Here's a gentleman who ought to be able to speak for the Irish. He certainly saw enough of them when he was playing for them. 
and I think you'd kind of like to meet him. He's the present commissioner of athletics of the All-America Football Conference, but he gained far more fame as a member of the immortal four horsemen of Notre Dame. Sleepy Jim Crowley. Jim, what do you think of the football game? Well, it's a great game out there. I uh, don't know whether the crowd appreciates that there's some uh, terrific blocking and hard hitting. And I think that's uh, the reason there hasn't been any scores. Uh, both lines have been great, uh, great defensively. And I look for a great second half. Tell me something, Jim. Would you care to go out on a limb and predict who's going to win this ball game? No, I wouldn't. As the game has been played now, in my opinion, Bill, why it's, it's still as though they're going to still toss the coin. How would you rate this Notre Dame team you're watching today with the four horsemen that you played on? Well, this is a great ball club. That, uh, it's just the first time I've seen them this year, and I wouldn't want to give an opinion. <laughs> you got over there. That was good, Jim. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Jim Crowley. Okay, Bill. Thanks a lot. Down on the playing field, the Notre Dame band has formed a circus tent. They are now giving a tremendous fan for a fair, and they are doing a tightrope act with a gentleman walking across the field on an imitation tightrope. The gentleman is the legendary character known as the Forgotten Irishman. He becomes the star of a trapeze act. That's what he's on now. And I might add, without the aid of a wire net, he falls down to the ground. There's no net under him to save him, and the crowd gets a big laugh out of the antics which are taking place in the Yankee Stadium. Here's another football score in the first period. Cornell nothing, Syracuse nothing. Now the Notre Dame band is going out of that formation in which they formed the circus tent, and we'll tell you what the next formation is as fast as they form one. Here's another score. BMI 7, Furman nothing. Let's listen. Well, the Notre Dame band has now formed a three-ring circus. In other words, there are three rings down on the playing field. The tent is gone, but in its place, the band is formed into three huge rings. In the center of the one ring is a trained horse act. The horses are actually human beings with the, uh, well, the things that make them go to look like a horse, a blanket thrown over the head and the ears sticking up where the ears should be and the tail where the tail should be. In the center ring are two clowns, and in the left there ring is what could go for the trapeze act where there are trapeze. So now picture, if you will, a three-ring circus taking place in Yankee Stadium as the Notre Dame band has split itself into three rings with three different acts going on at each of the three rings. Let's listen. followed by the cadets from the United States Military Academy, which signals that we're just about ready to start the second half of this football game. Actually, we have one minute and five seconds before the game itself will be called. Here are a few elementary basic statistics on the first half. In first downs, the Army made four, Notre Dame made five. Army tried ten passes and completed three. Notre Dame tried eight and completed two. Neither team was able to score. Both teams are back on the playing field. And here's one more score. K-6, Carnegie Tech nothing in the first period. Notre Dame's starting lineup for the first, for the third period will be exactly as it was for the start of the football game. Red Blake has not sent his team out on the field, and as soon as he does, we'll call that off. Chances are he'll be starting his first club, too, which will be Hank Bolberg at right end, Goble Bryant at right tackle. They're going on the field now, and this is it. Art Jeremiah at right guard, Jim Enos at center, Joe Steffi at left guard. Sheldon Biles at left tackle, Barney Poole at left end, Arnold Tucker at quarterback, Junior Davis at fullback, Rip Rowan at right half, and Blanchard, Doc Blanchard, at left half. Notre Dame's starting lineup for the second half will be left end, Jim Martin, left tackle, Georgie Connors, left guard, Bill Fisher. We're calling these out as they try onto the playing field. At center, George Strohmeyer. At right guard, Johnny Mastrangelo. At right tackle, John Fallon. At right end, Jack Silly. At quarterback, we're waiting to see whether it is or is not Lou Jack. Lou Jack at the moment is running around, and he has run up to Leahy and is talking to Frank right now. Well, let's skip Lou Jack for the moment as to whether he's going to start or not. At left halfback, it will be Jerry Cowie. At fullback, it's Jimmy Mello. And at right halfback, it's Amos Sitko. And the only questionable starter at the moment is Notre Dame Johnny Lou Jack, who is now talking to Frank Leahy. Incidentally, Red Blake has called his starting team right in close around him. They're huddled down on their haunches. Blake is in a stooped over position. He's talking to the boys, and you can just about imagine what he's saying. He's telling them that this is going to be the half that's going to decide this game. That everything that's gone before is water over the dam. Forget it. The mistakes you made in the first half, you can't undo them. Get them out of your mind. Don't make any mistakes if you can avoid it in this half. As for beating Notre Dame, this is a team that's smarting under two humiliating defeats. 
1943, rather 1944, the Irish were beaten by this very Army team 59 to nothing. And last year, on this day of days, the Fighting Irish went down to an insufferable defeat, insufferable for Notre Dame, on the long, or rather short end, of a 48 to nothing count. And you can just tell Blake, or rather you can be sure that Blake is reminding his boys that Notre Dame is going to do everything within her power to make Army eat crow today. And as for Blake... I'd almost take a guarantee that one of the last things he said to his boys was don't forget last year. This is the day they've been waiting for, both of them. They come into this game, they came into the game with their records unblemished. They have absolutely nothing, nothing to hinder them. They're throwing the works at each other. Up to today's game, both had a hold back. They had a play under wraps. Last week against Navy, Notre Dame wanted to show very, very little. No more than they absolutely had to, because anything they showed, Mr. Blake was there to see. He wasn't even with his club last week. He went down to Baltimore and personally scouted Notre Dame. Well, naturally, Mr. Leahy wasn't going to open up for him. But today, they can pull out all the stop gaps. No more wraps. Play it as it is. And it's going to be Army kicking off to Notre Dame. This is the reversal of what happened in the first period. Holding will be Mr. Glenn Davis. And kicking will be Joe Steffi. And here goes the beginning of the second half. There it is. The kick is up in the air. It is going end over end, all the way back to the Notre Dame five-yard line. We're taking the Jerry Carr. Gets up to the 10, up to the 15, gets up to the 20, stays on his feet, goes to the 25, and he is knocked down just shy of the 30-yard line. So it is Notre Dame ball. Uh-oh, here's a gentleman. We just want him to say hello. The game has started again. Bob Holmes. Bill, I've been running through these stands trying to find you. Who hit you down here in this box? Is this thrilling or not, huh? It's a great game. Bob. I'm ready for a nervous breakdown, but I'm very thrilled to be here, Bill. This is sensational. Bye, Wonderful Bob. to see you. I wish I could. I know you want to go on with the game. It's all right. Thanks, this Bob. is great. Thanks. Good to see you, Bill. All right, Ladies and gentlemen, I was Bob Hope. We're back to the play on this game. Just wanted to stick Bob on to say hello. In the meantime, Jerry Collick carried this ball. There was no game on the running play. The reason we felt that we should put Bob on, Bob, very kindly, after promising he would go on at halftime, waded through a crowd. They recognized him. They mobbed him. He couldn't get away from them. But he kept his word and came all the way down to the booth. And believe me, he took a beating to get here, so we wanted him to say hello. Jerry Collig again in motion this time. The ball is given on a quick lateral to Emil Sitko. Sitko drives from about the 30 up to the 32-yard line. But again, a two yards on that way. And he has stopped as he reaches the 33. Again, a three yards. I hope that made sense, putting Mr. Hope on after the game had started. Don't get confused. He's not playing for Notre Dame or for Army. But the guy was kind enough to take an unmerciful personal beating as the Hope fans, and there are millions of them, mobbed him as he tried to come through the crowd since he was kind enough to win his way all the way down to the broadcasting box. I don't think you mind it too much. In fact, I'm sure you approve of hearing him say hello. Notre Dame now has been penalized five yards. Five yards on an offside penalty. So it will be second down, 15 yards to go. Notre Dame is penalized and the ball has been set down to the Notre Dame 24 yards. Right. Marty Wendell goes in at center for Notre Dame. Here's a quick opening play this time. The ball is given on a double reverse. Dame will sit coming around the center of the line. He's up to the 25. Stays on the seat. Gets to the 30. He's knocked back to the 30. He gets to the 30. Then it's knocked down to the 27 yard line. When Doc Blanchard, left hand back of Army, hits him in the 30 and drives him all the way back to the 27. Referee puts the ball back on the 28. Ooh, Blanchard hit him hard. Notre Dame's ball on their own 28-yard line. It is third down now, 12 yards to go. Remember, Notre Dame was penalized by five yards from being offside a moment ago. We are in the second half of the football game from the Yankee Stadium. And here comes Notre Dame out of the huddle very quickly. Way out to the right this time is Jerry Cowick. He's a left-hand back with his support. Way out to the right. He's about 15 yards out. And it is Jerry Lujak back for an Irish pass. He throws it out on the flight. It's completed this time. And Abel Sitko, Sitko takes it on the 30s up to the 35. And he's knocked down on the 37-yard line. As he's knocked down on that 37-yard line, the ball squirts away from him. The referee is untangling a whole pile down there. But I believe Sitko hung onto that ball and it's still Notre Dame's ball. Ball is resting on the Notre Dame 35-yard line. It is fourth down coming up five yards to go. Notre Dame's ball on their own 35. We have started the third period of the football game. As a matter of fact, one minute and 15 seconds of playing time have gone by. Here comes Notre Dame up to the line of scrimmage very quickly now. Tucker and Davis are back in safety position for Army. Standing back in front formation is Johnny Lujak back on the Irish 25-yard line. He's waiting for the pass from center. It's a little low. He has to reach down to get it. He does. He boots it. It's up in the air. Waiting to take it is Arnold Tucker. He takes another 25. He's up to the 30, up to the 35, up to the 40. He stays on his feet. Goes to the 45, and he's knocked down on the Army 45-yard line. Arnold Tucker, quarterback of Army, runs the ball back to the 45, from the 20 to the 45. As Lujak boots it down to him, Jack Zilli makes the tackle. And we're well back in the play-by-play now. Score highly nothing. Notre Dame nothing. And Army is diving down now, five yards away from crossing the midfield strike. It is Army's ball, first and ten. Notre Dame is back to a five-man defensive setup. Five and three, and then two, and then one. Here comes Army out of the huddle now. 
Randall Tucker calling his signals, a balance line. Tucker takes the ball. He shovel passes it to Glenn Davis. Davis goes past the 45, reaches the 48, gets a three-yard gain as he goes between his center and his right guard. He's bucked down by George Connor. George Connor, the left tackle of Notre Dame, stops him on the 48 again at three yards on that play. It'll be second down coming up, seven yards to go. Army's ball on the Notre Dame 47-yard line. Score is still nothing to nothing. We have 11 minutes and 30 seconds of playing time remaining in the third period of the football game from the Yankee Stadium, and Army is just three yards shy of the midfield strike. Key formation, Tucker calling these signals. Blanchard to the left, Davis to the right. In motion is Glenn Davis. Ball is given to Doc Blanchard. Blanchard tries to burrow his way through the center of the line, and he didn't gain an inch. He stopped even before he can get back to the center of the line. Paul Notre Dame team is waiting for him. Johnny Lujak, Marty Wendell, Johnny Mastrangelo. There's a loss on that play of one yard. He didn't even have time to bend over and start to buck his way into the center of the line. He was hit so fast and so hard. Five-man defensive setup that lay he threw at him. Three men backing up the line. And those three men are continually pulling the Army tackles out of the line as they come plunging through to clear the way for their ball carriers. And then those three linebacker uppers go through and make a tackle. Tucker calling these out of a tee for Army. It is third down, three yards to go. Make that third and seven. Excuse me. Here's a single wing back formation this time with Doc Blanchard carrying the ball. He pulls his way across the middle of the field stripe. He goes down to the Notre Dame 46-yard line on a delayed line. Buck Doc Blanchard, the left halfback of Army, pulls his way between left end and left tackle, and he very nearly picks up a first down for Army. He's stopped by Wendell, the roving center of Notre Dame. It is now fourth down coming up, approximately a yard and a half to go, and it is Army's ball on the Notre Dame 46. Amos Sitko goes back into safety position, and so does Jerry Cowick for Notre Dame. Glenn Davis back in front formation for Army. Davis standing back on the cadets, 43. He'll boot from the 45. If he does kick, this could be a fake kick. It's only fourth and two. The ball goes back to Davis. They're going to play it safe. He boots. It's up in the air. Waiting to take it is Jerry Cowley. Cowley lets the ball come down to him. Ball bounced down and into the Notre Dame end zone, so it is an automatic touchback. Notre Dame ball first and ten on their 20. Notre Dame takes over first and ten on the Notre Dame 20-yard line. Notre Dame ball first and ten, uh, 20, first and ten on the Notre Dame 20-yard line. Army changes its defensive formation slightly. They've been alternating between a five and a six. When they find themselves in a crucial position, they generally go to a six. Otherwise, they stay at a five. Notre Dame's first and ten now on their own 20-yard line. Roars comes in at right end. Fulberg goes out for Army. Here's the ball given on a twisting reverse to Jerry Cowley. Cowley comes across the 20, gets to the 25, and reaches the 27 before he's hit down by Arnold Tucker. Jerry Cowley, left half back at Notre Dame, runs the ball over his own right guard, just moving just outside of right, center, just to the right of the center. Behind beautiful interference. He let that interference fall in from him. Form in front of him, and he went up to the 27-yard line. Billy Gompers comes in for Amos Sitko. Brennan for Cowley. And here's a twisting reverse into the fumble in the backfield. There's a fumble in the Notre Dame backfield, and we're going to have to have him pull him off to see who he covered that. Terry Brennan is the man who made the fumble. Let's see who he covered. Everybody is piled up on the play. The ball is resting on approximately the 26-yard line. It is still Notre Dame's ball. Terry Brennan fell on his own fumble. Terry Brennan was the man who fumbled that, and he recovered it. Barney Poole, left end of Army, was in like a shot. He tried to get his hands on it and couldn't. It is third down. Still two yards to go. Make it three yards to go. Notre Dame's ball. Notre Dame running out of the tee. Jerry Lujak calling these signals. Lujak takes the ball. Gives it on a spinner to Terry Brennan. Brennan going around the third line. is up to the 30-yard line. Cross of the 30. Gets to the 33 and reels off a first down for Notre Dame. The ball is being brought in on about the 33-yard line. And it's another first down for Notre Dame. That's Notre Dame's sixth first down of the game. Army has made four today. Notre Dame has made six. Jimmy Enos, roving center of Army, is the man who stopped that play. Here comes Notre Dame out of the huddle. They move the ball up to their own 33-yard line. Nine minutes of playing time remaining in the third period. There's no score so far in this game. A cross buck with Billy Goppers carrying the ball. Goppers bucks his way between his right guard and right tackle. He found a hole he could wedge his shoulders through. He tried to thrust it all the way through with a piercing drive. A final lunge pushed him forward to approximately the 37-yard line. Notre Dame's ball on their own 37-yard line. It is second down. Ten yards to go. There was very little gain on that play. Practically none. And it is Lou Jack back for an Notre Dame pass. It is not good. Intended for Jimmy Martin, the left end. Martin goes high into the air, but he can't go high enough. And it goes for an incomplete forward pass. Martin stands six feet two. He weighs 205 pounds. He's out of Cleveland, Ohio. He was in the Marines for three years in the Pacific Theater. Incidentally, this boy is a great defensive end as well as being a fine pass catcher. He couldn't get that when it was thrown too high for him. He had no chance. Blanchard and Roars were both covering for Army. It is third down, still 10 yards to go. Deployed out to the right is Terry Brennan, some 20 yards out to the right of his own right end. And it is Lou Jack back for another Notre Dame pass. He throws it across the line of scrimmage. Terry Brennan takes it. He takes it up on the Notre Dame 41-yard line, stays on his feet, and is knocked down on a 42. 
Terry Bennett picks it up from the 42 and reels off a nine-yard gain. That's almost a first down for Notre Dame. And the cadets are marching, or rather the Fighting Irish are marching down the field. He's bringing in the line sticks to measure whether this is or is not. Glenn Davis was slightly injured on that play. Davis of Army is injured. That's a loss that Army can ill afford. Glenn Davis, one of the great all-time backs in football, considered by many to be in the same bracket with Tommy Harmon of Michigan, Buzz Borey's of Navy, the all-time greats, Red Grange of Illinois. Down for the first time I've seen him down in three years, injured. I believe that's the first time Davis has ever been injured. He's back on his feet and looks for the hand he gets. Glenn Jr. Davis, back on his feet and he's going to stay in the game. Ready to take his place, had it been necessary, was Bill Gustafson. Bill is still standing on the sidelines with Red Blake. Red doesn't want to take any chances on Davis. If Davis is limping, I imagine Red will pull him out. But Bill Gustafson has not gone into the game at the moment. He is still standing on the sidelines talking to Blake. Davis is still in there. He's trying that ankle out. Apparently, it's Davis's right ankle. He's limping as he walks up and down the field, and his own teammate are looking at him anxiously. They can ill afford to lose him, and while he makes up his mind whether he's going to stay in or stay out or come out, the Army band strikes up. Let's listen. He's going to stay in the game. Davis is staying in. He's going back into safety position. So it is Notre Dame ball. And it is fourth down, approximately six inches to go on the Notre Dame 43-yard line. And they're going to gamble on this in a nothing-nothing ball game. They're not going to play it safe and kick. It's a line, but this time with Terry Brennan to the center of the line. And he either just made it or just missed him. The whole Army team is waiting for him. Terry Brennan on the line, but they're going to bring those line sticks in again. Notre Dame gambled on a fourth down with six inches to go. Did they make it? If you hear a terrific roar go up, you'll know they did. If you hear one, if you don't, if it's quiet, you'll know they didn't. Listen, listen. They did! Gambles on a fourth down with six inches to go and just makes those six inches. Notre Dame ball, first and ten now on their own 43-yard line, 15 yards in from the northern side of the playing field. With eight minutes of playing time remaining in the third period, score is nothing to nothing. Jimmy Mello is deployed deep. Ball is given this time to Johnny Lujak on a twisting sneaker play. He faked it to Gompers, kept it himself, and he gains nothing. He spun around between his right tackle and right end and picked up no yardage. At most, he might have picked up a half a yard. Let's call it second and ten. It's about second and nine and three quarters. A foot gain on that play. Left halfback, Doc Blanchard, is the man who stopped him. Holy Cross, Colgate scores an ounce. Holy Cross leading Colgate, seven nothing at the end of the first quarter. Here comes Notre Dame out of that huddle very quickly. Let's stick with this ball game. Two unbeaten teams playing each other. Brennan in motion. Lou Jack back for the pass. He throws it over the center of the line. It's going to be the knockdown. Blanchard high into the air. He bats it down. And Blanchard picks up that ball. Or rather stops it around his shoot out. Let's let the referee decide whether Doc made an interception or not. Hurt on the play is Jim Martin, the left hand of Notre Dame. Blanchard knocked the ball down, scooped it before it hit his shoe, or as it hit his shoe. If he scooped it up as he hit his shoe, in other words, if he tapped it, it is no interception. If he got it before he touched the ground, it is an interception. Referee rules he tapped it, it touched the ground first, hence it is an incomplete forward pass. Injured on that play is Jim Martin, a six foot two inch boy, a 205 pounder. I believe I said a moment ago he was from Cleveland, Ohio. He is. He's injured on the play, but he is staying in the game. Bullberg is going in at right end. Jim Roars goes out. That's a change for Army. Score is Army nothing, Notre Dame nothing. A jam-packed Yankee Stadium. Watching this game, which has certainly had its quota of thrills. Both teams have had scoring opportunities. Neither team has driven too deep, with one exception. Army drove down, way, way down, and was stopped twice. Notre Dame got down real deep on one occasion. There's a single wing over the right this time. In motion is Billy Goppers. Johnny Lujak back for the pass. He throws it out to Goppers. Goppers takes it on the 40. He's up to the 43. Gets away from one man and is knocked down on the 47-yard line. Billy Goppers, right half like a Notre Dame, is knocked down by Doc Blanchard. Boy, that Blanchard really not only plays great offensive football, he's tremendous on the defense. Swarming all over this field to bring down ball carriers. And he stops that play on the Notre Dame 47-yard line. Again, a five yards on the play. It'll be fourth down coming up five yards to go. Johnny Lujak back in punt formation for Notre Dame on her. He is standing on the Notre Dame 37-yard line. Tucker and Davis are back in safety position for Army. As the pass, it's low. Lujak gets it. He's booting for the sidelines. They don't want Junior Davis to get his mitts on it. Glenn takes it on his own 15, just in bounds, and he's hit down immediately. He gets forward to about the 18-yard line and was dropped in his tracks by Marty Wendell, center of the Notre Dame. Glenn Davis never got started with that ball. He caught it on the 15, started up the field. He was hit on the 18, and it's Army's ball first and 10 on their own 18-yard line. George Strohmeyer coming in at center, replacing Marty Wendell, who made that tackle for Notre Dame. 
Army fall first and ten on their own 18. The sun is shining. Temperatures down in the 50s. 75,000 people in the Yankee Stadium watching this football game between unbeaten Army and unbeaten Notre Dame. Here comes Army out of the huddle very quickly. A quick lap will thrown over to the left this time with Doc Blanchard in the center of the line. Blanchard pulls his way from about the 18 to the 23 for a five-yard gain. Call it a four-yard gain. Johnny Fallon, John Mastrangelo, and George Strohmeyer. The entire right side of the Notre Dame team stopped him. Gain of four yards on that play. It'll be second and six. Army's ball deep down in their own territory in the 22. The ball's about midway between the two sidelines. Stripe score is Army nothing, Notre Dame nothing. Here comes Army out of the huddle very quickly now. Arnold Tucker calling these signals out of a T formation. No man in motion on this play. Incidentally, a seven man defensive line is being used against him. Blanchard carrying the ball again. He's up to the 20, 25, and knocked down on the 27 yard line. Picking up another four yards and almost reeling off a first down. Doc Blanchard. Left half back of Army. Sometimes in at full, sometimes in at wing back. He's finally stopped by Jack Zilly, the right hand of Notre Dame, who had a spilly interference and get ducked. He got him. Score Army nothing. Notre Dame nothing. Five minutes and 20 seconds of playing time remaining in the third period of the football game from Yankee Stadium. That's a scoreless tie. Army out of the huddle. Glenn Davis in the middle of the tee. Blanchard on one side. And the other side is Rip Rowan. The ball is given to Blanchard. Blanchard gives it to Davis. Davis coming around the short side of the line. And he gets away from one man. He's back to the 30 stays on his feet. He goes out of the 35 yard line. He's knocked down on the 35 yard line by Terry Brown. Terry Brennan, the left half back of Notre Dame. Oh, that. He ran into Terry Brennan. Full blast. A first down for Army. This is Chesterton Radio, the true, good, and beautiful at ChestertonRadio.com. Cadets got something to yell about. Army ball first and ten in their own 35. As Glenn Davis, finding that he cannot get between the tackler and the sideline, just runs into the tackler. Full bent. Bowled him over. Here's a quick shovel pass this time. Given to Rowan. The ball is fumbled. The ball is fumbled. Johnny Fallon, the right tackle of Notre Dame, I believe, fell on that ball. And I think it's a Notre Dame recovery. Hang on, hang on. I think Notre Dame recovered on the Army 34-yard line. They're pulling off players one by one. Referee hasn't signaled yet exactly what it is. It's Notre Dame's ball. An Army team that is not only... great, but has risen to great heights to thwart four scoring opportunities that Notre Dame has had, mainly thanks to fumbles by Army and recoveries by Notre Dame, now finds themselves back in a hole, and once again must try to put their shoulder to the wheel and stop a Notre Dame team, which is determined to try and take advantage of one of these breaks and go over. Notre Dame has the ball first and ten on the Army 34. Red Sitko is back in at right half back. Billy Goppers goes out. Rick Rowan goes out at right half back. Billy West comes in. It's Rowan who made that fumble for Army. Notre Dame ball first and 10 on the Army 34-yard line. Lujak calling these signals. Johnny Lujak gives it on the line. Bunker Red Sitko. Sitko into the center of the line and no gain. Red Sitko, right halfback. Emil Sitko, nicknamed Red. Of course, you'd never guess why. It just happens that he has red hair. Five foot 10 inches, weighing 185 out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Favorite pastime is pitching horseshoes. First and ten, or rather, excuse me, second and ten on the Army 34-yard line. Lou Jack again. Lou Jack on the cross, bucking in Terry Brennan. Brennan drives to the 32-yard line for a gain of about two yards on that play. He's brought down by Joe Steffi and Jim Enos. Gain of two yards on the play. It will be third down coming up now, eight yards to go, and Army's defense is automatically stepping back. There goes Tucker back. There goes Davis back. They smell that Mr. Lou Jack's going to throw a pass at him. Third down, eight yards to go. Score Army nothing, Notre Dame nothing. Four minutes to play in the third period. The Yankee Stadium, temperature in the 50s, the sun beaming down. White clouds and a blue sky. Lou Jack calling these signals. He's right down behind the center. It's Johnny back for the forward pass. Cox his arm back, looks for the man. There goes a long Notre Dame pass all the way down to the 10-yard line. Intercepted by Arnold Tucker of Army. He takes another 10 up to the 15, the 20, up to the 25. Stays on his feet, draws to the 30, gets up to the 37. And it's Army's ball, first and 10 on their own 42-yard line. Arnold Tucker, a brilliant quarterback, saves the day for Army. He went high into the air. Pulled that one right into his tummy and raced back up the field with it. Thrown by Lou Jack, caught by Arnold Tucker of Army. A beautiful block thrown by Blanchard, enabled Tucker to get started. Army ball first and ten on their own 42. They seem to have pep now. 
Billy West in motion this time. Ball is given to Blanchard. Blanchard moves his way down to the 50s. He's at the 37 of 45. He's finally knocked out of bounds all the way down on the Notre Dame. Notre Dame 37 yard line. Blanchard stays on his feet and keeps going to the Notre Dame 37 yard line and listens to the stadium. rapidly a Notre Dame team which seemed to have the situation well in hand now finds itself with its back to the wall just as a few moments ago Army's back was up against its wall Army thanks to a pass interception by Tucker on the 10 runs it up to the 42 Blanchard pulls his way between left tackle and left guard for 23 yards as he runs it down to the Notre Dame 37 yard line and there are 3 minutes and 15 seconds of playing time remaining in the third period and now Notre Dame has their back against the wall, and for the first time this afternoon, the Army team is beginning to look like the Army team of old. That Blanchard run was exactly the way Blanchard has been running against Michigan, against the teams that they've been piling up scores on. West Virginia 13, Fordham nothing in the first period. At the halftime, Penn State 20, Temple nothing. At the half, Maine 21, Bowdoin 14. At the half, Harvard 14, Dartmouth 7. At the first period, Boston University nothing, New Hampshire nothing. In the first period, Williams nothing, Wesleyan nothing. In the first period, Michigan 14, Michigan State nothing. At the halftime, Duke 6, Wake Forest nothing. In the first period, Pittsburgh nothing, Ohio State nothing. In the first period, St. Bonaventure 7, Bowling Green nothing. There's an interesting score. St. Bonaventure is coached by Huey DeVore, who coached Notre Dame last year. St. Bonaventure 7, Bowling Green nothing. First period score, Brooklyn College nothing, Kings Point 7. And here's the last score, a first period score, Holy Cross 7, Colgate nothing. Jack Ray is in at right tackle, replacing Joe Steffi. And the interesting fact of Ray being in for Army, he's the kicking specialist. He can boot field goals from almost any position. So should they need him, they've got him. Here's Glenn Davis trying to go to the center of the line, and he gains two yards. Glenn Davis on an off-tackle smash. Goes to the 35, and he's knocked down on the 35 by Johnny Lujak. Lujak comes up to make the tackle. And it is now second down, eight yards to go. Army's ball on the Notre Dame 35-yard line with three minutes of playing time remaining in the third period, and it's a scoreless tie. Ashbow, right halfback of Notre Dame, replaces Billy Gompers. Pep Finelli comes in at fullback. Jimmy Miller goes out. Here is Lujak, or rather, excuse me, Tucker. Tucker giving it to Blanchard, and Blanchard moving over his own right side. That was an attempted quarterback sneak with Tucker finding no hole whatsoever. With his back up against a brick wall, he shoveled it over to Doc Blanchard. Blanchard picked up two yards, and it is now third down and six yards to go. Army playing smart football, and one man has stopped there, lateraling to another, shovel passing it out. He handed it off to Blanchard that time. It is third and six. The defense is deep for a pass. Tucker's back, and the forward pass completed. It's completed to Bolberg. Bolberg takes it all the way down to the 20 yard line. And Bolberg carries it down to the Notre Dame 20 yard line. And it's Army ball, first and 10 on the Notre Dame 20. This is the deepest time he's been all day. Notre Dame's going a seven man line at him now. Trying to get through and rush the ball carry or rush the passer. Tucker calling these signals. Waiting for the man to be in motion. Arnold Tucker shovels the pal back. Davis. Davis is fading back and throwing an army pass. There's an army pass out of the goal line. Intercepted by Notre Dame. Ashbo intercepted for Notre Dame on the five. It's brought back to the nine. And it's Notre Dame's ball first and ten on their own nine yard line. The Irish take over on their own nine. Notre Dame goes back into an immediate huddle. And a scoring look for a moment like it's put. As Army in four plays, came all the way from the own 10 to the Notre Dame 20. That scoring opportunity has gone up into thin air. That's Notre Dame ball, first and 10 on their own nine. Key formation, Johnny Lujak back. He flips it over to Terry Brennan. Brennan's cutting around the right side of the line. He's up to the 10-yard line, up to the 15-yard line, up to the 20-yard line, up to the 25, up to the 30. And he has finally run out of bounds on the 30-yard line. Wisconsin, six foot tall, 170 pounders, cut around his own right end, started on the nine and wound up on the Notre Dame 30. Oh, don't count either of these teams out. A minute and five seconds remaining to be played in the third period. Score is nothing to nothing. Notre Dame on the rampage. Billy Goppers comes in at right halfback. Ashbow goes out. Here's a quick opening play. The ball being given to Billy Goppers. Goppers comes from the 30 to the 33. He's hit down very hard on a low tackle by Billy West, right halfback of Army. And it will be second down coming up now, seven yards to go. 
Ray goes out of the game. Joe Steffi comes in at left guard for the cadets. 45 seconds remaining in the third period. A game which has kept this huge crowd literally spellbound. Here comes Notre Dame out of the huddle very quickly now. Johnny Lujak calling the signal for the Notre Dame T formation. It's an orthodox T. Nobody's in motion. A balanced line. Now in motion is Billy Gaffers. Ball is given on the cross back to Pop Finale. Finale goes into the center of the line. He may have picked up two yards. That's about all. But so beautiful was that decision, a deception by Pep Finale, that Billy Goppers was tackled by Goble Bryant, the right tackle of Armour. And when Mr. Goble Bryant tackled Goppers, Goppers turned around to him and said, Look, Sonny, I haven't got the ball. What are you tackling me for? Beautiful deception on that play. Actually, Folberg stopped the play. Here comes Notre Dame out of the huddle very quickly. Wonderful deception. There's only six seconds remaining in this period. This will be the last play of the period. In motion is Terry Brennan. Lou Jack back. He throws a pass out to Brennan. Brennan takes it in the lateral. He's up to the 35. Gets across the 40. Gets up and is knocked out of bounds on the 44 and a half yard line. Brennan goes to the 44 and a half. And there's another first down for Notre Dame as the third period ends. Score is Notre Dame nothing. Army nothing. And the fighting Irish of Notre Dame have clawed their way. Literally clawed it. All the way from their own nine yard line. They've come up the field to the Notre Dame 44 yard line. With Billy Goppers of Notre Dame, a halfback who started as a relief man doing yeoman service, both on the offensive and on the defensive. Incidentally, some of these Notre Dame boys are not as heavy as you might think. Sitko weighs 185, Terry Brennan weighs 175, Livingston weighs 175, McGurk weighs 195, and Mello's the heaviest man weighing 197. Here's some more scores. Uh oh, with timeout, I think we better have a station break. We're just about to start the fourth and final period, and from the Yankee Stadium in New York, we pause for station identification. Back to the Yankee Stadium, ladies and gentlemen. It's just about time to start the fourth and final period of the Army Notre Dame football game. The National Broadcasting Company sending it your way. This is Bill Stern speaking, and the score is Army nothing, Notre Dame nothing. And now Notre Dame has the ball, first and ten on their own 44-yard line. Blue Jack calling his signals out of a team formation with a balance line. He gives it on the cross by Terry Brennan. Brennan plows across the 45, reaching the 47, for a gain of three yards on that play. He was stopped by Joe Steffi and Tommy Hayes. Gain of three yards on the play. It will be second down, seven yards to go. Notre Dame's ball on their own 47-yard line. And this stadium is literally jam-packed. Barney Poole is out at left end. Tommy Hayes is in. Jerry Colley comes in at left halfback. Terry Brennan goes out. That's a change for Notre Dame. All right, time to play football again. Johnny Lujak fakes to go back to throw forward pass. He fumbles the ball. Fumbles the ball. The ball is picked up by Doc Flanagan. Flanagan chasing down the sideline. And he steps out of bounds on the Notre Dame 42-yard line. And once again, the ball changes hands. And it's Army's golden opportunity. As Army has it on the Notre Dame 42, first and 10. Flanagan's left half side of Army. Went high into the air. Picked that fumble up. It was skidding through the air. And Flanagan recovered in the time. He's ball first and 10. Notre Dame had a golden opportunity a moment ago. Army had an even better one just two moments ago. Now Army's got a third one. Each side getting going when they get that ball. Army's ball first and ten on the Notre Dame 42. T formation. Arnold Tucker in motion is Davis. Ball is given on a quick flip pass out to Glenn Davis. Davis takes the bug on the 45, gets to the 40. He's knocked down on the 39-yard line. Davis picks up four yards. Glenn Davis, fullback of Army. Running out of the fullback position at the moment in the T formation. Actually, he is a wingback. But he runs out of the middle of the T, which is where they fullback normally belong. The right halfback spot out of the Army T is Billy West, and the left halfback spot is Doc Blanchard. Right down behind center calling the signals is Arnold Tucker. Gain of about four yards on that play. It'll be second down coming up six yards to go. There are 14 minutes of playing time remaining in this game. The score is Army nothing, Notre Dame nothing. And the cadets are threatening. They're down on the Army 38-yard line. It's Tucker back for the forward pass. He throws an incomplete. Hank Folberg right in with the man for whom that was intended. And Folberg could not get it. Hank Folberg, Army's right in. Six foot one, weighs 200 pounds out of Dallas, Texas. He's one of the three Dallas players on the squad. He's earned two letters in football. I believe he also plays lacrosse. And I think he plays basketball, unless I'm very much mistaken. Major Bob Brigham, my Army spotter, says he does. Time to continue playing football. Army has the ball on the Notre Dame 38-yard line. And it is now third down, six yards to go. Mr. Bobby Stoglin is running on the playing field, and as Dave Warner of Notre Dame points out, he is going in at the moment at left end. 
There he goes. The foot, Mr. Stogren, in at left end. Arnold Tucker at quarterback. He fakes the throw fast. Instead, he gives it to Glenn Davis. Davis tries to power his way right through the center of the line. George Sullivan, the right tackle of the Notre Dame fighting Irish, the man who stopped him and stopped him on the Notre Dame 36-yard line. And it is now fourth down, four yards to go. Army's ball and Notre Dame 36. And believe me, if they got any tricks in their bag, they'll pull them out right now. Anything up their sleeve, because they may never get this close again. There are 13 minutes of playing time remaining in this game. Score is nothing to nothing. Army has the ball on the Notre Dame 36-yard line. And if there's any tricks that Blake has been saving, here it comes. Army's ball, fourth down. Better than four yards to go. A reverse cross puck with Davis giving it to West back to Blanchard. And back to Davis. Four men carrying the ball in the backfield. And I don't think they made a first down. Davis was the ultimate man who carried that ball. He reached the Notre Dame 34-yard line. I think he missed a first down by approximately a yard and a half. Let's see whether he did or whether he didn't. The line sticks are being brought in. This is very close. That was a triple reverse. Worked in the backfield. It is Notre Dame ball. They take over. Notre Dame ball. First and ten on the Irish 34-yard line. Neither of these teams willing to give away the other anything. So what looked like a great scoring opportunity for the unbeaten cadets from West Point who are, have won 25 consecutive games. They haven't been beaten. In the last two and a half seasons, there's a running play on Notre Dame. It's shoveled out to Jerry Cowley. Cowley coming out of the center of the line. He's trapped behind the line. It's going to be knocked out of bounds on the Notre Dame 24-yard line. On the 24, a loss of 10 yards on that play. Jerry Cowley, left halfback of Notre Dame, is running out of bounds on the 24-yard line by Sheldon Biles, left tackle of Army. And he is pulled right out of the game, and Terry Brennan is put in his place. One very lovely lady listening to this football game out in South Bend, and I assure you, with her heart in her throat, thinking of other Army Notre Dame games, Mrs. Knut Rockney. Key formation this time, Johnny Lujak calling these signals. He's back for the pass for the Fighting Irish. He throws it, and it is not good. Intended this time for Mr. Kozakowski, the new right end of Notre Dame, or Billy Gompers, both racing down the right sideline. Ball is thrown so far over their heads. They knew that if they did catch it, they'd be out of bounds, so neither one raised their arms or made a try for the ball. Incomplete. Third down coming up, 19 yards to go. Loss of almost 10 yards on the first play. An incomplete pass on the second. Tommy Hayes is in at left end for Army. George Cannon, Connor rather, comes in at right tackle, replacing George Sullivan. That's for Notre Dame. Deployed out wide to the right is Terry Brennan. He's out on a flat. Two and a half yards behind the line of scrimmage, 15 yards out wide. Ball is giving him an end around. Billy Gopper's carrying the ball. He's up to the 25-yard line, up to the 30-yard line, and he's just up to the 30. Billy Gopper's, I believe we called it an end around. It's a right halfback and a wide swing around, taking it away from Johnny Lujak, who faded back on a fake pass. Lujak faking the pass, giving the ball to Gopper's. Gopper's going back to the 30 and picking up some of the yardage, which was lost on the preceding play. Bullberg, right in of army, refuses to let his end be turned, and he stops the play. Fourth down, 14 yards to go. Notre Dame ball. And Notre Dame is going back into a punt formation with Lujak standing back on the Irish 20-yard line. Tucker and Davis are back in safety position on the Army 35. Let's see where the kick goes to. It's fourth and 14. It's a low pass, but the kick gets up in the air. It's not as good a kick as he kicked earlier. Ball is coming across the midfield stripe down to the Army 43-yard line. It will go down on the 43, a dead ball. It'll be Army's ball, first and 10. Army takes over first and 10 on their own 43-yard line. So, with 11 minutes of playing time remaining in the fourth and final period of the football game from the Yankee Stadium, the score is Army nothing, Notre Dame nothing, and Army has the ball first and ten of their own 43, and Army asks for timeout. Here's some scores of other games. First period, Navy 6, Georgia Tech nothing. Halftime score, Yale 21, Brown nothing. First period, Florida nothing, Georgia nothing. Here's some more scores coming in all the time. Here's a first period score, North Carolina nothing, William and Mary nothing. A halftime score, Pennsylvania 27, Columbia nothing. A halftime score, Syracuse 7, Cornell nothing. The first period score, Massachusetts State 7, CCNY nothing. A halftime score, BMI nothing, or BMI 20, Furman nothing. A halftime score, NYU 6, Lehigh 3. First period score, Rochester nothing, Vermont nothing. Here's a halftime score, Rutgers 20, Lafayette nothing. First period score, Rensselaer 6, Amherst nothing. And a halftime score, Virginia 20, Princeton nothing. Those are all scores of outside ball games. Score of this particular game is Army nothing, Notre Dame nothing, and 
changed at the moment is Mr. Joe Steffi of the left guard of Army, who is coming to the sidelines and getting a well-deserved round of applause as he does. He's being replaced by Jack Ray. So they call automatic Ray at West Point because he's in for the extra points and he generally makes them good. Army's backfield is Billy West at right halfback, Tucker at quarter, Davis at full, and Blanchard at Ray at the left half. Army takes over now, first and ten. And it is Army's ball on their own 43-yard line. We have 11 minutes and 30 seconds of playing time remaining in a scoreless tie. Barney Poole comes back in at left end, and Tommy Hayes goes out. Time to play football again. Arnold Tucker calling these signals out of the T formation. Tucker takes the ball. He shovel passes it to Davis. Davis worms his way through the center of the line. He crosses the 45, gets to the 47, and he stopped on the 47 by Jenny Mastrangelo, the right guard of Notre Dame. And it will be second down coming up, five yards to go. A gain of five yards on the play. Army's ball on their own 47-yard line, three yards shy of the midfield stripe, and the ball is resting midway between the two sideline stripes. Here comes Army out of the huddle very quickly now. They want to get a score if they possibly can. Arnold Tucker calling these signals. He gives another quick flip lateral. This time to Blanchard. Blanchard is stopped as he hits the center of the line, and I don't think there's a gain of anything on that play. Billy Fisher, left guard of Notre Dame, is the man who stopped him. No gain. Third down. Five yards to go. Billy Fisher, nicknamed Moose, weighing 225 pounds out of Chicago, standing six feet two, majoring in physical education, hopes to become a coach. What do you think he likes least in life? Being awakened in the morning. Well, that would go for a lot of us. Army's ball. It is third down. Five yards to go. Army has the ball on their own 47-yard line. In motion this time is Glenn Davis. Tucker's calling these plays. Arnold Tucker back for a pass for Army. Throws it out to Davis. Davis catches it on the Notre Dame 45. He's knocked out on the Notre Dame 44. And it's a first down for the cadets. Army ball first and 10 on the Notre Dame 44-yard line. Once again, Army is getting a chance to score if they can keep driving. They took over on their own 42. They've come up the field now. This drive started on the 42. They have it now on the Notre Dame 44. First and 10. There's a running play this time with Billy West powering his way into the center of the line. He found very little opening. The buck was unsuccessful. He drove through, found a bit of a wedge, and thrust his shoulders through for perhaps a gain of one yard, but no more. George Sullivan, the right tackle of Notre Dame, is the man who brought him down. Notre Dame seems to fear far more of those tosses, the heaves, the passes, the throws of Glenn Davis or of Tucker than they do the line smashers of Blanchard at the moment because they're playing their defense deep. They seem to say, we'll give you three yards, but we want to stop those passes if we can. And here's a pass that's knocked down right in its tracks. There's a wild roll for the ball. George Sullivan, right tackle, and Notre Dame falls on that ball, but I think it'll be ruled an incomplete forward pass. Arnold Tucker was trying to throw a pass just as he got it out of his middle. It was batted down by Georgie Connor, left tackle of Notre Dame. And George Sullivan fell on that ball for what looked like it might be a Notre Dame recovery, but actually it's a dead ball once the pass is incomplete. Sullivan, man who completed that play, six feet three inches tall, out of East Pole, West, East Walpole, Massachusetts, weighing 210 pounds. It is now third down, still 10 yards to go. And it is Tucker to Davis. Davis going back to throw an army pass. There goes a long pass up in the air. It is intercepted. Intercepted by Army and ends up. Army ball carrier, or rather by Notre Dame, Emil Sitko goes high in the air, intercepts it on the 10-yard line, then drops it. He drops it. Johnny Lujak falls on it back on the 10-yard line. Sitko intercepted that on the 10. It got away from Sitko. It went rolled back to the Notre Dame 5 where Johnny Lujak fell on it. It is Notre Dame's ball, first and 10 on the Notre Dame 5-yard line. So the ruling on the play is it was a pass interception followed by a fumble. They ruled that Sitko had possession of that ball and that he dropped it after he had possession of the ball and it was recovered. Then it becomes anybody's ball and it was recovered by Notre Dame's Johnny Lujak. So it's Notre Dame's ball first and ten on their own five-yard line. Ball is given on the line plunge this time to Brennan. Brennan goes from the five approximately to the seven-yard line and then is hit so hard on the tackle by Sheldon Biles that he's driven all the way back to the three-yard line. But nevertheless, the forward motion of the ball was stopped in the seven, so it's a gain of two yards. It is Notre Dame's ball first and, or rather, second and eight on their own seven. Billy Fisher, left guard of Notre Dame, is slightly injured on that play. Notre Dame's Billy Fisher injured on the play. He's the boy we were talking about a moment ago, standing 6'2", nicknamed Moose, weighing 225 out of Chicago. He's the boy who doesn't like to be awakened in the morning. 
Right at the moment, he is not off in the land of dreamland, but he's not far from it. He was really hit hard. Wind was knocked out of him. He's back on his feet now. 225-pounder. He's reeling around in the end zone like a drunken man. He's going to be taken out of the game. He had all the wind knocked out of him. But if his parents are listening in, he's dog fighting over to the sideline so the boy is not hurt. Listen to the hand he gets. Signiego goes in in his place, replacing Bill Fisher, injured on that last play. The league of Stopson comes in at quarterback, replacing Arnold Tucker for Army. It is Notre Dame's ball, second and eight on their own seven-yard line. Notre Dame in that T formation. Danny Lujak calling his signals. Notre Dame's got his back up against the wall now. Lujak hands it on the cross back to Emil Sitko. Sitko runs it up to the 10-yard line, crosses the 10, falls forward to the 11. A cross puck, Lujak to Brennan, faking to give it to Brennan, not giving it to Brennan, giving it to Sitko. Runs the ball up to the 11-yard line. It'll be third down, coming up now five yards to go. And between four and five, and there are ten minutes, eight minutes of playing time remaining to be played in this football game. Ball is resting on the Notre Dame 11-yard line. It is Notre Dame's ball, and the score is Notre Dame nothing, Army nothing. On a game which has watched these two teams battle on semi-even terms all afternoon long. Which has watched these two teams battle on semi-even terms all afternoon long. Here's Jenny Lujak this time. He flips it out on a low pass this time to Brennan. Brennan just has to keep that ball in his own possession. He has to reach for it. He finally gets it on the six-yard line. He's hit immediately by Barney Poole and there's a five-yard loss on that play. So Notre Dame comes up to a fourth down, finds themselves lacking 12 yards of a first down. They have the ball on their own six-yard line, and now Mr. Lujak is going to have to kick from his end zone. Notre Dame's ball. The Fighting Irish have it on their own six-yard line. The league stops us. And Glenn Davis are back in safety position. Remember, Tucker is not in the backfield now for Army. So Lujak is standing five yards behind the goal line. He's asking the crowd, please be quiet. Please to quiet down so he can hear these signals call. And he knows when the ball's going to be passed to him. The referee has stepped in now. is trying to quiet the crowd down. Everybody's cooperating. You can hear a big hush settle over this Yankee Stadium. 75,000 people heed that signal and quiet down. They realize this boy has really got responsibilities on his shoulders now. There's a pass from center. He steps forward. He boots it. It's a nice one. It's coming up the field, waiting to take it to Slim Davis. He takes it on the 50-yard line. He's back in the Notre Dame territory. It's out of the 45. Gets away from one man, and he is knocked down on the Notre Dame 39-yard line. Len Davis, step back of Army, runs it from the 50 down to the 39. And he's stopped by Georgie Sullivan, right tackle of Notre Dame, and it's Army's ball, first and 10 on the Notre Dame 39-yard line. And here comes Arnold Tucker in. And bet your bottom buck, he's got instructions from Red Blake. Arnold Tucker's coming in now. There are six minutes and 30 seconds of playing time remaining in this football game. And here comes Arnold Tucker trotting in. Nice looking boy, that Tucker. As a matter of fact, many of these kids on both of these teams are handsome boys. It's time to play football again. Rush Ashbow comes in for Amos Sitko at right halfback for Notre Dame. Army's ball first and ten on the Irish 39-yard line. Tucker calling these signals on a cross He gives it to Davis, and Davis gains nothing. As a matter of fact, he loses a yard. He's knocked back on the 40-yard line. George Connor is waiting for the play. Whoever was to take Connor didn't do it. George Connor, same boy we talked about a moment ago, 225-pounder. He was a sub-chaser. He was on a sub-chaser in the war. He was discharged as an ensign in the Navy. He saw service in the Pacific. Army's ball, single wing over the right this time in motion is Glenn Davis. Tucker getting this ball. He's fading back to throw a pass. His arm goes back. There goes a pass, and it's not good. Barney Poole was the man who had it in his hands and dropped it in the whole Army's rooting section. Let go with a woo, just as they thought he had it. Arnold Tucker throwing, and Barney Poole going high into the heaven. He was all the way down to the Notre Dame 28-yard line, and it trickled through his fingers and went for an incomplete forward pass. But if you're an Army rooter and you feel badly about that, think how Mr. Poole feels. He's one of the best ends in the business. He's out of Gloucester, Massachusetts. Weighs 215 pounds, stands six feet three inches tall. He's one of three great brothers, three great athletes. In motion is Glenn Davis again. Arnold Tucker fading back for another pass. Cuts his arm back, looks for his man. He can't get the ball away. The ball is fumbled and picked up by Jim Martin. I don't think that ball touched the ground. It'll be ruled a pass and a shutter. It's Notre Dame ball on the Army 48-yard line. Here's what happened. Arnold Tucker fading back a throw forward pass. Has his arm jarred. The ball squirts away from him. Jim Martin, the left hand of Notre Dame, gets it before it hits the ground, recovers for Notre Dame, intercepts it, and it's Notre Dame's ball on the Army 49-yard line. And on the first running play, Terry Brennan bucks his way over his own right tackle and goes down to the 46-yard line. 
Again, at three yards on that play. So it'll be second and seven. And now Notre Dame is down on the Army 46, 45-yard line. And there are five minutes of playing time remaining in this football game. Don't you go away from that loudspeaker. Army nothing. Notre Dame nothing. The Irish are down on the Army 44-yard line with a second down coming up. Six and a half yards to go. Lou Jack calling these signals. He's played almost the whole game. He gives it to Brennan. Brennan gains a yard and a half, and that's all. Jimmy Enos roving center for Army, who's played a whale of a game, backing up the cadet's rear line. Backing up the rear of the cadet's line, I should say. Stops him after a gain of one yard. It'll be third down, coming up four yards to go. Notre Dame fall on the Army 43-yard line, and Army is dropping Mr. Davis back. They smell a pass coming up. Johnny Lujak is calling these signals, and he's played a brilliant game today. If he's got a weak ankle, he hasn't showed it so far. Harry Brennan deployed out to the right. He's out on a flat three yards behind the line of scrimmage, 15 yards out to the right of his right end. It is Lou Jack back for the forward pass. He throws it out to Brennan. It is not good. Nowhere's near Terry Brennan. The closest to it was Arnold Tucker. And it's going to bring up a fourth down. Fourth down, four yards to go. Notre Dame ball down on the Army 43-yard line. And now Notre Dame is faced with a decision. Fourth down, four yards to go. Shall they play it safe? And kick, put Army so deep in a hole that Army might never be able to come out of it, or shall they try and run? They go into a punt formation. Johnny Lujak standing back in kick formation. Apparently our, our Notre Dame is going to play this safe. Back goes Glenn Davis in safety. Mr. Johnny Lujak boots for the sidelines. He's driving it away from Davis. The ball goes down and out of bounds on the... And out went into the end zone. But for the moment, like it might be going out of bounds on about the one-yard line, and the crowd held its breath. It hit the line and then bounded into the end zone. Did a tightrope back right down the sideline. And this huge crowd just went... They sucked in their breath as they thought for a moment that that ball was going out of bounds on the one-yard line. It didn't throw it. Went into the end zone. It's Army's ball first and ten on their own 20. With four minutes of playing time remaining in the football game, and the score is Army nothing, Notre Dame nothing. Billy Goppers and Rush Ashboro are changing places at right halfback with Ashbow in the game at the moment. Army's ball now. Billy West deployed out wide to the right. Arnold Tucker calling his signals. Tucker takes the throw, pass, elects to run with the ball and gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. Arnold Tucker cocked his arm back as though he was going to throw it, then pulled the ball back into his chest and started to buck his way through the center of the Notre Dame line, but he didn't get very far, and there was no gain on that play. Tucker's out of Miami, Florida. He stands 5'9". He weighs 179. He was a star athlete at the University of Miami before he enrolled at West Point. He also served in the Navy, even though actually, at the moment, he is playing football for Army. He's captain-elect of the Army basketball team and co-captain, well, not co-captain of this team, that's Blanchard and Davis, but he is captain-elect of the basketball team. Second down, 10 yards to go. In motion is West. Ball is given on the cross buck this time to Davis. Davis gets up to the 23-yard line and is hit down on the 23. He bowled his way between his left tackle and left guard before Georgie Sullivan, the right tackle of Notre Dame, could bring him down. There are three minutes and 15 seconds remaining in this football game. We're getting into the final seconds. We're in the fourth and final period. Score is Notre Dame nothing, Army nothing. Army is unbeaten since December of 1943. They won every game in 1944, everyone in 45. They won everyone this year. Notre Dame is unbeaten this year. Way out to the right goes Mr. Junior Glenn Davis. He's deployed out wide. A quick kick! A quick kick by Arnold Tucker! It rolls all the way back to the Notre Dame 20 yard line. It's rolling around loose on the 20. And Notre Dame is going to let it stay right down there. It goes back to the Notre Dame 22 yard line. A quick kick by Arnold Tucker, quarterback of Army. Catches Notre Dame flat footed, and it's Notre Dame ball first and 10 on the Irish 22 yard line. And on that exchange of punts, Army picked up 36 yards. Notre Dame out of a huddle, or rather into a huddle very quickly. There are two minutes and 30 seconds remaining to be played in this football game. It's Notre Dame ball first and 10 on their own 22. Army's playing its defense very deep. They're wanting to give Notre Dame a few feet or yards through the line, but they want to knock these passes down. And it is Mr. Terry Brennan. He goes over his right side as he pulls his way from approximately the 22 to the 27 for a five-yard gain before he's stopped by Hank Bulberg, right end of Army. And Army's defense is now a four-man line, four men backing up that line, and then come two men deeper than that. In other words, Army is satisfied to let Notre Dame come through the center of the line, but they want to knock those passes down if and when Notre Dame starts to pass, because they don't feel they'll be beaten by runs. They feel they'll be beaten by passes. And it's Lou Jack back for the pass. He throws it. It's completed up to Jimmy Martin. Martin is knocked out of bounds on the 35-yard line. Make it the 34-yard line. And that's enough for the first down for Notre Dame. There's a minute and 45 seconds remaining to be played. Bringing the ball in now. First down for Notre Dame, and that stops the clock. 
So it is first and ten for Notre Dame. They have the ball on their own 34-yard line. Army's defense is terribly deep. I said a moment ago, they're perfectly willing to give the Irish five yards every time they go through the center of the line now. They're not worried about that. What they do want to stop is Lou Jack's passes. Time is called. Time is called on this last play, but it's the referee's timeout while they get the line sticks measured. The crowd, and it's 75,000 strong, has literally poured down onto the playing field. They are waiting most anxiously to get out onto the game, get out onto the playing field to congratulate their respective heroes. This is a great victory for both teams if it stays and winds up in a stalemate. Both will be unbeaten after today. Notre Dame on their own 34 with a first and 10 with a minute and 45 seconds remaining to be played in this game. Floyd way out to the right this time. Billy Goppers. And it is Johnny Lujak right down behind the center takes the ball. Lujak gives it to Terry Brennan. Brennan pulls his way from the 34 up to about the 30. Well, let's call it the 38 for a gain of four yards on that play. It'll be second down coming up six yards to go, but time's a fleeting. There's a minute and 35 seconds remaining to be played, and the Army boys are taking all the time they're entitled to as they get up off that ball. They don't want Notre Dame to run any more plays than the Irish are entitled to. Entitled to 25 seconds between each play, but Notre Dame is running right back to the line of scrimmage. They want to get in all they can. It is now second down, six yards to go. Johnny Lujak gives it on the cross buck this time to Terry Brennan. Brennan up to the line of scrimmage. He stopped on the 41-yard line. Army's defense is deep. They're giving these line plunges two or three yards head start because the defense is so deep. They're worried about passes, not about the line plays. Notre Dame is running through the line. And injured on this play is George Sullivan, right tackle of Notre Dame. George Sullivan. He's out of East Walpole, Massachusetts, weighing 210, standing 6'3". Wants to become an optometrist when he's through. He's a shot putter on the track team, a big burly lad. With timeout and a minute and 10 seconds remaining to be played, here's the picture. Army and Notre Dame have battled on even terms. Closest either got was Notre Dame drove all the way down to the three-and-a-half-yard line to be protected slipping. This was way early in the ball game. Army took the ball over, marched back up the field, but neither team has had a good scoring opportunity since then. They've both been down in each other's territory, but not deep enough to really be called a great opportunity. Now, with a minute and ten seconds remaining to be played, it is Notre Dame's ball. Third down, three yards to go on the Notre Dame 41-yard line. Johnny Fallon, the right tackle of Notre Dame, deployed out a little bit deep this time. He's deployed out wide. Here is Lou Jack back for the pass. They're going to the long Notre Dame pass. Intercepted by Army Arnold Tucker. Arnold Tucker intercepts for Army. He intercepts it on the Army 40. It's on the ball. First and 10 on the 44. Army has the ball. First and 10 on the 44-yard line. And there are 50 seconds remaining to be played in this game. Lou Jack threw it. Tucker intercepted. And now Army wants to get in as many plays as they possibly can. Time has been called with 50 seconds remaining to be played. Jack Ray comes back into the ball game at left guard for Army. He's the kicking specialist. And there goes Mr. Steffi out, Ray in. And that is just a powerful suggestion by Red Blake that should Army drive down anywhere near that goal line, let Mr. Ray take a whack at a field goal if time's running out. Ashbo comes in at right halfback. Billy Gompers goes out for Notre Dame. It's the last seconds of the Army Notre Dame game from the Yankee Stadium. 75,000 people standing at attention. Nobody is going for the exits. With only 50 seconds to go, they'll take their chances on the crowd jam after the game. They want to see the finish of this football game. 50 seconds. Now Blanchard is way out to the right, and this time a quarterback sneak with Arnold Tucker, thinking that everybody would think that he was going to throw the ball, tries to pull his way through the center of the line. He may have picked up about three yards before he is brought down. There's very little gain on that play, a gain of about a yard. Notre Dame seem to be waiting for it. Notre Dame defense is deployed way deep now. It's a five-man line. Three men backing that up. By. There goes Arnold Tucker back for the pass. He's fading back. Hands it back to Glenn Davis. Davis throws the pass. Army man racing down. He catches it down on the 20-yard line. Doc Blanchard. Blanchard takes it all the way down on the Notre Dame 20-yard line. And the referee says he caught it. He was out of bounds. Referee says he caught it. He was out of bounds. Davis threw it. Blanchard caught it all the way down on the Notre Dame 20. But it is not good. Blanchard was out of bounds when he caught that ball. So it's an incomplete forward pass. There's 20 seconds remaining to be played in this game. Now Notre Dame's defense is about 30 yards behind the line of scrimmage. They know that it's going to be passes. There's only 20 seconds remaining in this football game. Arnold Tucker calling the signals. Glenn Davis is right behind him. Davis in motion this time. Now it's Arnold Tucker fading back to throw a forward pass. He cocks his arm back, looks for his match. He's going to run with it. He's back to the midfield strike. He's down to the Notre Dame 45-yard line. There's 15, 14, 13 seconds. It is Army's ball. First and 10 down on the Notre Dame 43-yard line. And there's 10 seconds remaining to be played as the clock has stopped. And for the first time this afternoon, if you can understand the terrific pressure these boys are under, tempers begin to flare up, and a few of the boys begin flailing away at each other with their fists. But I don't believe there was any bad meaning there. 
All it is that these kids are on edge. It's a 15-yard penalty against Army for unnecessary roughness. Army penalized 15 yards for unnecessary roughness. Army is detected as the instigator of that battle royal, which started a moment ago in the field, and then quickly the referee separated between the combatants, and Army is socked with a 15-yard penalty, which moves the cadets back to their own 42-yard line. Barney Poole is out at left end for Army. It is now Army's ball. This will just about be time for the last play. Maybe time for one more after this. Tommy Hayes is in and at left end replacing Barney Poole. Arnold Tucker is calling these signals out of a T formation. There's only 10 seconds remaining now. Tucker is going to carry this ball himself. He gets up to the 45-yard line. He's knocked down on the 48-yard line. There's three seconds, two seconds, one second. There she is. He's all over. It's a nothing-nothing tie. Army nothing. Notre Dame nothing. That's the end of the ball game. playing field, surrounding both their supporters. The Army team and the Notre Dame team is literally being snowed under by a whole host of well-wishers. Fans from all over have poured down onto the playing field. The sideline markers have gone down, and the goalposts have gone down. But in this stadium, the Yankee Stadium, the goalposts go down like magic because they drop down into the ground. The management of the Yankee Stadium have had enough experience to know that they'll be torn down if they don't take them down. So they have little traps in the ground that just swallow these goalposts right up. So just as fast as the game is over, somebody presses a button and boom, the goalposts are out of view on both ends of the stadium. The bands are playing. Let's see if we can't pick up one before we have to go off. Below the Army band and the Army rooters are striking up, so let's listen to that one. Now the crowd roaring at the approval and rustling to the orderly stadium a few moments ago has now become the scene of the very utmost in confusion. On the sports newsreel last night, over many of these same stations, we had Jim Crowley on, and Jim, either inadvertently or very wisely, picked the score of this football game. And if you heard him on the air at halftime this afternoon, you know that he again reiterated when he said he didn't know who would win, and he thought it might wind up in a scoreless tie. As a matter of fact, I don't think he said that on the air, but he did say it last night, and he certainly was right. Everybody's been picking this game from a whitewash for the Army to a whitewash for Notre Dame to a one-sided ball game for either team. And it turns out to be one of these old Pitt Fordham clam bakes, if you know what I mean. For three years, they battled each other on even terms, neither team able to score. Each game, uh, the teams came up to the game predicting that this would be the game of the century, and they were so evenly matched that nobody got a score for three years running. Well, here are the statistics. You don't play off on statistics, but they're interesting to listen to. In first downs, Notre Dame made 10 to Army 7. Army tried 19 passes and completed five. Notre Dame tried 18 passes and completed five. And touchdowns and field goals and extra points, they just weren't any because there weren't any. There was no scoring of any kind. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we've reached the end of another football broadcast sent century way by the National Broadcasting Company. Today, NBC relayed across this country through its affiliated stations the most important game of the season. The Army-Notre Dame football game, as was to be expected, it was a bitterly fought contest. But as most people did not expect, it wound up in a nothing-to-nothing tie. Army and Notre Dame came into this game with unbeaten records. Both were out to do everything in their power to dethrone the other. The Army was generally regarded as the best team in the country, and Notre Dame was rated by the experts as just a shade under Army if they were rated at all under Army. There were many who thought that Notre Dame actually was the better team of the two. On the record up to this game, Army had walloped Villanova, Oklahoma, Cornell, Michigan, Columbia, Duke, West Virginia, and Notre Dame had run over Illinois, Pitt, Purdue, Iowa, and Navy. Now, after today, Notre Dame has to play Northwestern. And as you know, Northwestern is one of the powerhouses of the Big Ten. As a matter of fact, they were unbeaten until they got taken over by the Buckeyes last week. So that should be a great game next week, Notre Dame versus Northwestern. Next week, Army goes up against Pennsylvania, and Pennsylvania last up to last week was unbeaten. They were beaten in a surprising upset by Columbia, or rather by Princeton University. So that Penn Army game should be a good one, too. So both of these two teams, which tied each other today, face major opponents next week, which could conceivably beat them in an upset, but both will go into those games as top-heavy favorites, thanks to the fact that they stood each other, they stood each other off this afternoon. Now for a recap on this game. I think we could sum it all up in a few words. We won't, but we could by saying that Seldom have we seen two teams who tackled harder, blocked more furiously, passed with more determination, ran the ball, used their head on any and all occasions, didn't play any dumb football at any stage of the game, played smart alert football, took chances when it, 
when the odds seemed to be in their favor, when it was the right thing to do, and yet wound up all even Steven. As a matter of fact, it was a very close game from the very moment it began until the gun went off, which ended it. Neither team had a decided edge. Actually, Notre Dame had a little edge in the statistics, but it was Army that threatened the more frequently of the two teams. So you can just about throw one out against the other and say that it was an even Stephen ball game. In the first period, Notre Dame had one chance to score, and Army had two. In the second period, Notre Dame had another chance to score, and Army had one more. So Army had had one more chance to score than did Notre Dame in the first half. And we're calling any chance to score which finds the rival team breaking down inside their opponent's 25-yard line. In the second half, it was even Stephen with both teams having a semi-chance to score of three times apiece. There you can see there wasn't much to choose from. For individual stars, Blanchard, Davis, and Tucker certainly shone brightly for Arnie. And Mr. Lujak played one whale of a ball game for the Fighting Irish from Notre Dame. And that's just about the story. Next Saturday afternoon and each Saturday afternoon, up to and including the end of the football season, the National Broadcasting Company will be sending your way the most important games of the day. I hope you'll be at your loudspeaker listening. Make a mental note right now of the station to which you're tuned. That's your nearest NBC station, and that's the station over which you'll hear the nation's great football games as they take place on Saturday afternoon. Before I sign off from the Yankee Stadium, may I very briefly thank those who played such a prominent part in making this broadcast possible. My two spotters, for Army, I had Major Bob Brigham. For Notre Dame, I had Dave Warner. Both of these boys have worked with me before. Both did a splendid job, and I'd like to thank each one of them. Our engineer today was Red Shoulders, who handled a man-sized job very creditably. Producer was Mr. Joseph Mansfield, who also kept statistics, and that's two jobs in one. Last but by no means least, may I thank NBC for the use of its extensive facilities in order that you might hear this game this afternoon. One more final thing I might point out before we sign off. Both teams were looking over the top of the stadium this afternoon towards a potential Rose Bowl bid. You know, the Big Ten has voted to go out to the Western Conference and play the champion of the Western Conference on New Year's Day in Pasadena. Well, now, Notre Dame generally goes along on whatever the Big Ten does. Now, that's not saying that Notre Dame would or would not accept a bid, but they wanted to remain in the running today if they could, just in case one came their way. Well, they still are in the running. As for Army, it's an old story how much the cadets wanted to go to the Rose Bowl last year. At the last minute, they were not allowed to go, even though they'd had an unbeaten season. They were promised or semi-promised that if they had another unbeaten season, they'd certainly be considered this year. Well, they're still in the consideration because the final score today was Army nothing, Notre Dame nothing, and that's all there is. This is Bill Stern speaking from the Yankee Stadium in New York City. We take you now to Chicago.